Hi, Christy. Hi, Bree. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? So far, not bad. Yeah. Has it been a busy day for you? It has. We have been um, doing this since 10. Oh, my goodness. So it's um, it's interesting, you know, and we've had people pop in. Um, some students, some, you know, interested, you know, I, you know, faculty members or staff members. Um, you must have somebody else coming with you. Yeah, Gabrielle is probably going to be popping on here shortly. Yep. There she is. <laughs> yeah, I know how exhausting those can be just from the just bouncing from one to the next and talking the whole time and all of those things. So, so have you guys done many things like this? Yeah, so we've been doing, I think, I mean, we really started to amp up these types of things. I would say probably in like what, November, Gabrielle, would you say like October, November ish? Definitely. I think we started kind of figuring it out a little bit more at the beginning of October and we really got the hang of it by I'd say middle of November, we figured things out. So yeah, well, good. I should have had you guys, you know, come first and tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a learning experience for us too. Yeah. I mean, you know, Gabrielle has done a lot on the back end just to research the different platforms like Handshake and College Central and stuff, just so that we all can, you know, easily figure these things out. So it's definitely a learning process. That's for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And and none of them are the same because I attended, <laughs> um, it was a job fair and I don't know what platform they were using, but I was like, okay, how does this work? How does it look from the job seeker side? What does it look like, you know, from you guys, because it, it's all different. And, yes. you know, are you getting much action? You know, I mean, you want to know that too, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would say, um, as far as your question there, it ebbs and flows depending on the school and how early we set up these events. So sometimes we would do it, you know, we would post it on Handshake and we would leave it up to the school to advertise and market our info sessions and things like that. Um, we didn't get a really good response from those ones just because I don't know if we got lost in the emails, the shuffles, yeah. it was bad timing, you know, whatever that is. Um, but a lot of the more local um, technical colleges and things like that, um, we've had greater success with those. So um, I would just say it ebbs and flows and it all depends on what time you have them and what week you have them. And I mean, all of that stuff that we haven't you know, figured out completely yet, but um, it takes yeah. a while. <laughs> it takes yeah. a while. Yeah, I, I definitely don't know. And that's why I did, I put that out to, you know, hey, if you're in a class, go ahead and join us. And I thought, not knowing, you know, not knowing what classes are there. And, and I wanted to work around your schedule too, because mm -hmm. I don't know what you guys have going on and maybe that doesn't work for your schedule. So if sure. we could just get the information out, learn more about you guys, then, you know, it could be recorded and then students can access it when, you know, when they yeah. can. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, I didn't know I had, I thought I was going to have both of you, but I wasn't sure. So I thought, well, I'll just, I'll go with it. But um sure. You know, I will let you kind of, you know, kick off. This is kind of like the second half of today for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, you you guys can just kind of talk about uh, the Avita, where, you know, all the locations, because I know I don't know all those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then what you, you know, have to offer. Sure. Sure. So we actually have a presentation. Um, I oh. think, was Kevin signed up for our information session today, or did we just see that his resume came through? He, I think he just sent his resume through. Okay. Okay. So um, I just wanted to make sure we weren't waiting on him. Um, okay. So we actually have um, a presentation, Christy, that we like to work through. Um, and so if that's okay, we can kind of um, bring those things up and, and whatnot. So let me go ahead and pull that up real fast. Okay, so it looks like you um, you'll have to, um, have to enable. Yes. Okay. Let's let's try this. Let's see if that helps. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Yay. Great. Okay. So um, let's go all the way back to the beginning. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it in presentation mode. So. Um, 
Of course, hello, my name is Brie Harmon and um, Gabrielle Adams is also on the line. So my role here at Avita is um, I'm the recruiting and engagement manager here. So um, I kind of oversee the, the you know, higher level recruiting. So the applicant tracking system, kind of the strategic pathway for building relationships and connecting with the organizations around us, um, developing, you know, pipelines for recruitment purposes, just getting, um, you know, brand awareness out there talking about who we are as Avita, what our plans are for the future. Um, and then, you know, Gabrielle, I work very closely with her. So I'll let her go ahead and introduce herself. Yes, I'm the human resources recruiter. Um, so I actually do a little less recruiting and a little bit more coordinating. I handle a lot of the logistics when it comes to opening and closing positions within Avita, as well as I review all applicants that come in. I ensure that they're kind of getting to the right hiring managers. Um, and then if you were to apply to a position with in Avita, I'd follow up on that and I'd reach out to those hiring managers to give them a quick, let them know that you're interested still, see if we can get some feedback for you. I'm kind of that middleman between the applicants and the hiring managers. Yeah. So who are we as a Vita Health System? So we are a locally governed nonprofit integrated healthcare system. So basically what all of those words mean is that um, the folks who make decisions for our hospital, they are actually local. So a lot of them live in Ontario, they live in Galleon. Um, so we have a board of directors and then we have our CEO. Um, and together those folks make the decisions for our hospital system. Um, you know, what, what services are we gonna provide in the future? Do we need more pediatrician? Do we need, um, you know, a, a 3T MRI machine um, type of thing? So those are all of the decisions that are made um, from the local from the, the local government. So we don't have a big corporate um, place somewhere, you know, in Chicago or something. Um, all of the people live local in our government or in her government. All of our, you know, people that make decisions live in our community. Um, so we do have three hospitals along Route 30. So we have one in Bucyrus, we have one in Galleon, and we have one in Ontario. Uh, we also have, um, I think, over 30 some doctor's offices or clinics spread throughout um, Richland and Crawford County. Now we are expanding a little bit into the surrounding counties, uh, but generally, you know, the bulk of our clinics and, and things are in Crawford and Richland, Richland County. Um, we are looking, you know, very closely at Morrow County Hospital. Um, that's something that I believe is still in conversation. So um, it's basically just a bunch of hospitals that make up our entire health system. Um, the community-based expansion and services, so what's really important about us being locally governed is that the people who are making the decisions, they know our community, right? They know the services that are most prominent in this area. They know services that are lacking in this area. So they take that information and they say, okay, what does our community need? Um, you know, how can we invest in our community? How can we um, make it a better place for you know, the patient experience, essentially. Um, we do a lot of in community involvement with, a, um, as far as Avita goes, uh, a lot of our um, events or, you know, participation type of um, things were canceled this past year, of course, because of COVID. Um, but some of the things that we participate in, um, of course, the charity drives around Richland and Crawford counties. Um, we are involved in the Moving Hearts and Souls 5K, um, the Community Health Fair, uh, we do have a great program internally. Um, it's called Help Us Help Our Own, basically where employees can pledge a certain amount per paycheck that says it's going to go into a fund. And when one of our employees experiences something that is just devastating um, or, you know, maybe they their um, their house caught fire and now they need some funds to help them. Um, that's something that we have. It's, it's our community internally, and it's so great. We've helped so many people, um, so many employees in the last couple of years. Um, last year or the year before that, um, I believe we raised over, it was significant more than $100,000 um, that will then in turn be used for our internal community. So that's something that's really great. You can, you know, impact for as little as a dollar a paycheck if you want to. Um, so it's a really great thing that we have going on internally. And then of course we have our various company events that um, we host for our employees. 
um, our community pic picnic, our holiday gatherings. Um, some of that stuff looked a little bit different, you know, this last year because of COVID, but uh, we always try to, um, you know, build that community internally as well. Uh, we host community fairs at the Richland Mall. We have um, kind of a health fair where we have different um, departments set up so you can go and get, um, you know, a hearing test done. You can go and talk with maybe a nutritionist. Um, so we have these little things that we like to offer um, for free to the community. So we always try to, you know, stay in the community and, and do what's best for our folks there. So. Bree, how many, um, yeah. about how many employees are there with Avita? Throughout. Yeah, we have just um, met our 2000 employee mark. Wow. So we're just a hair over at like 206 or so. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually pretty big, you know, and um, a lot of people don't think we're that big per se, but um, yeah, we're about 2000 employees now. And growing. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and growing. We actually are um, looking to open the second floor of the Ontario Hospital. They're doing renovations and things right now. Um, we just opened a distribution center in Crestline for our supply chain. So um, we are growing. Um, I think that's our goal, you know, but to continue that community feel, um, I don't think our goal is to ever get as massive as, you know, maybe the Cleveland Clinic or something. Um, but we definitely are growing and expanding. Mm -hmm. so. so I just want to touch a little bit about the different types of opportunities that are offered. Um, so these are just general overview that we like to provide with students to give them an idea of the types of different positions that are available. So with clinical openings, there's full-time, part-time, and casual or contingent status. Um, so of course, you can see our hours here full-time. will those kind of benefits tag on with those statuses. Um, so full-time is 70 to 80 hours for us. Part-time ranges from 16 to 69, and casual is zero to 15 hours. Um, so of course you can apply to be in any of those positions and you can move into a full-time role or move down to a casual status role, depending on the position, it's all available there. Um, and then of course our job access and applications. I touch on this a little bit more towards the end of the presentation, but just in general, we, you can go through our website at evitahealth.org. You can access all of our roles through there. Um, so it is a wide range of jobs, but it's really simple to use. You just look up those keywords of the positions that you're interested in. And then of course, take your time to apply to those. We always talk about when you go through those application process, just fully completing the application. Um, we have a ton of different types of, tons of different questions that they're gonna be asking for you that are just standard questions that need to be answered if you're gonna be considered as a new hire. Um, so yeah, and then of course we have a high rate of internal promotion. So this is something I think is very interesting about Avita because I don't see this with other hospitals. It's never not as, not as common. Um, so Avita is really, prideful on this internal promotion. If you are a part-time or full-time status, you just need to be in your position for six months without any written warnings or any kind of disciplinary action. And you have the ability to apply to any open position among all three campuses. So you, or any of our clinics. Um, so if you come in as a registration representative and you decide after your six months that you, you know, I wanna get into the receptionist position at you know, a different clinic, um, as soon as that opening comes up and you are able to transfer into that position and we do pride that the hiring managers look at those internal employees or internal candidates before they look externally so it's a lot of possibility with internal promotion so um gabrielle just on that let's say i am a student or even a graduate you mm -hmm. know of the physical therapy assisting program if i came in today and you know just you know maybe got that receptionist or like a um like a patient care associate, I don't know what they're actually mm -hmm. called, but, um, you know, just kind of that entry level. And then I see that a PTA position opens up. If I'm there that six months, I can automatically go to that. Well, I can apply for that. Yes, absolutely. And like, like we said, they really will check out those internal candidates before they look at external. Um, so that's something that if, if that position is what you're aiming for, and you're even if you're con continuing your education during the time that you're here, that's what we always say for students, it's good to come in as maybe 
a casual status as a dietary aid or an EVS to somebody that cleans and you only work one, you have to work one shift every 30 days or something along those lines. So it's about one shift a month, (laughs) right? Which is very doable for a student. Um, So you get in and you get your foot in the door. And then that way, when that position becomes available, you've already been known with your hiring manager that they can put in a good word for that position that you truly are aiming for. Very cool. It's great. And I, I take it there's an education assistance in there. Yes, we do. We do provide a continuing education program. You do have to be here as a part time or full time status for one year. I think it's part time too, right, Brie? Or is it just full time? Yeah, it's part time or full time. Yep. For yeah, one so year. you do have to be here for one full year before we'll go review a continuing education for you. Um, and you have to like send in some paperwork and apply for it and all that good stuff. Cool. Um, but that option is definitely there. And you can even be for like skilled laborers. So if you decide you come in as general maintenance and after a year you want to become a boiler operator, you know, we can help you with that education to get that, that license. So wow. it's, that's a specific thing actually through the state. That's not even, you know, that's not a healthcare regular yeah. technical college thing. So that's very exactly. cool. Yeah. So it's, it's great program. Our continuing education program is huge, I think. And there's a lot more that goes into that that we'll touch on in the next slide about a lot of those clinical positions. So we'll can touch on that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, uh, our internal rate of promotion is great. I know the person that was currently previously in my position, she moved from like a registration representative to a receptionist to the HR administrative assistant and then into the recruiter role. So she had a lot of movement, but a lot of growth. Well, yeah, yeah, and her right. bachelor's degree was in like fashion merchandise. So yeah. <laughs> completely not related to <laughs> what she was doing, but um, it, I lots think- Lots of transferable good. skills. Yeah, yes. also something you're that right. we talked about. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so that, and then of course we touched on the continuing education program. That is absolutely an option. And the decentralized hiring process. So this is something that's maybe a little irregular um, just because people are so used to speaking to the person that's actually hiring for the position. So we are what's called decentralized. So I am the recruiter, but I don't, I will not be able to hire you for a position because I don't know the needs of the department. I don't know what fits best with their culture and their specific department. So we do allow for the hiring managers to hire at their own pace. Um, We're trying to get some things in place that we can provide clear updates on applications, but We really are just here to be your resource and to advocate for you. So anytime someone does apply and they decide to call in, I immediately reach out to that hiring manager. I let them know that they're interested. I really try to, like I said, advocate for them on their behalf. Um, And then I tell them to follow up in a week. And if we don't have any feedback, I'll I'll get some feedback for them. Um, So that's kind of the end goal there. But we, we provide tons of different things as decentralized, especially as our role. We try to be a resource in every way. So we've been doing mock interviews. We help with resumes. Um, We really try to be there for the community in a whole. You're taking my job. No, (laughs) (laughs) we can we can both be a resource for each other because I do some of those same things. So Uh, absolutely. Uh, So some of the programs that we have for nurses. So I know there are um, a lot of healthcare type programs um, there at Marion. So we wanted to kind of go over some programs that we have specifically for um, nursing students or or folks who want to be a nurse eventually. So we have what we call an STNA and LPN float pool. So basically this provides a flexible schedule to nursing students with an STNA certification or an LPN licensure. So what that essentially is, is um, they're in that casual status. So they have to work a shift every 30 to 45 days, depending on the department. Um, however, it's just basically when they're available. If you say, okay, I'm available every other Tuesday for this eight hours or this 12 hours, um, are the people who coordinate that are very, very flexible in that. And this is what essentially it's set up to do, right? It's, it's to help you get your foot in the door. It's to help work around your program, get you that experience, get you a VITA specific experience. Mm-hmm. And um, the folks that are a part of this pool or this float pool, they're guaranteed an uh, interview for a full-time RM position once they have finished school. So um, you're definitely, you're guaranteed that interview um, for, you know, whatever department you're looking to be in or whatever specialty as far as nursing goes. 
Um, we also have a student nurse residency program, and this is for people who are um, currently Avita staff members. So again, you get your foot in the door as registration or um, you know a patient care associate on the floor. Um, so it's intended to provide additional support, learning opportunities, and networking connections to nursing students at Avita. So some of the requirements to enter into this residency program um, are kind of what you see listed there. So um, you have to be in your last year of nursing school. Um, of course, you have to have one clinical, um, one recommendation from a clinical instructor, a recommendation from your nurse manager. So it's really for those folks who work on the floor and you don't have to necessarily be an STNA on the floor or an LPN. You can be a unit clerk on the floor, which is um, a lot like a registration representative, mm -hmm. except you're doing a little more of the logistics between, you know, this patient needs to go from this bed to this bed um, or this floor, they need to get this and that, those types of things. So um, that's, you know, that's a really great program as well. So some of the additional support are learning opportunities. The student nurse gets gets to um, do some, some tasks or um, medical procedures. That sounds like surgery sometimes, I feel like, when I say it. But medical procedures such as like um, a, a catheter and, and those types of things, they get to be supervised by a nurse on staff um, so that they get that additional learning opportunity, um, you know, and that repetitive task and things that, so that, you know, they can better learn those skills. Um, and then lastly, we have our RN tips program or transition into practice. What this is, it develops a basic foundation of knowledge for new graduates and those from outside the acute care setting. So this is something that also hones in on those technical skills. You know, you're being supervised by a nurse. Um, maybe you're going, maybe you're in the meds, on the med surge unit but you're you 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 blah, 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 learning something <laughs> from um, you know something that can be utilized on the OB unit, um, and also it focuses on the soft skills or those those um, things that you don't really think about once you enter into nursing. Um, you know, maybe you you don't experience until you experience it. So maybe your first death that you've had to witness, maybe. Um, somebody that coded and it kind of, you know, freaked you out a little bit. Burnout, um, they talk about that. So it's a lot of those skills to, um, on the technical side as well as the, the, the soft skill side where it's that emotional fatigue, um, you know, entering into your nursing career that first year. So um, a lot of programs, um, they're becoming more robust as we move through them and as they grow. Uh, so these are something that we're super excited about having and being able to offer to um, our students and our nurses at Avita. So. Cool. And then just to give a big, a little bit more of a wide view on the different types of positions that are out there. Uh, these are all of the different departments, not all of them, but a good Good chunk of the different departments that are under our Avita Health System, it can provide you just an idea of the different types of roles that are out there. So I know for me, I really wasn't too familiar with a hospital setting. So it's kind of really provided me some clarity on the different types of fields. So, you know, I wasn't too understanding of like the risk management or quality, you know, the quality department. There's just a couple of different departments that I wasn't so familiar with. So of course we have purchasing and supply. You can see that there are a different couple of different roles under there, um, like the procurement position. Those are different positions that you just don't really think about, especially when that PPE became very important over the last year of COVID. Yeah. These positions really showed up. Um, so that's always great. And then of course you can see we have accounting, the standard nursing, imaging, this patient financial services, so that's hospital billing and professional billing. Um, it's just interesting to see like billing and coding specialists are just a whole different realm. Um, so they take what the doctor has actually written out, but in their code and they determine how much your bill is. Um, so I think that's such an interesting aspect as well. And then we have IT, that centralized scheduling, which helps with scheduling surgeries, anything along those lines. We have community relations, volunteer services, which is always a department that's in a big need. Um, I always say for students that are just looking for like a quick internship, you know, it's not going to be paid, but getting that volunteer experience, getting yourself in a hospital setting is wonderful. Just getting yourself being able to familiarize with, yes, there is registration in the front desk. Who do they typically go to next? You know, just like I said, familiarizing yourself with the system. Like the inner workings of the hospital, so to speak. Exactly. And that's even if you're going to apply for just a grad school, you know, getting that familiarity will help you feel more comfortable when applying to those situations. Um, so yeah, we have all these different departments that I think are really wonderful. And we always like to provide students with that brief overview so that they can see that there are different options out there other than just clinical settings. Mm -hmm. 
And we give them the typical speech of being like, don't silo yourself, you know, just because you have an RN doesn't mean that you can't go and be a part of quality. In fact, that's one of the requirements to be, um, you know, have a position within our quality department is to have your RN. So uh, we like to, you know, mention, hey, if if the um, purchasing agent looks interesting to you, go out and search job descriptions, search for jobs, see what the recommendations are or the qualifications requirements. Um, and you know, work towards that. So uh, we always say, just don't silo yourself. There are so many support roles in a hospital if you're truly looking to be in healthcare, but maybe less of the patient facing side, more mm -hmm. of the support roles. Um, there are gobs of, of positions out there, so. Mm -hmm. And then the, this is just how we typically end our presentations. Well, we have another slide about like career success, but we like to touch on how they can apply. So especially for those juniors and seniors, it's pretty straightforward. Um, through avitahealth.org, you go through our careers tab and then you click on employment. Like I said previously, it will redirect you to this platform called ADP, where you can search all of our positions. Anything that is on there is currently open. Doesn't matter how many days old it is, it's open. Um, so search through all the positions, use any of those keywords that you're looking to kind of filter that. Um, and then click apply. We say always add two points of contact because email and phone number, you never know which one's gonna work best for some people. And then review the application fully before completing it. That's just our biggest suggestion. And I, in the chat, I, I inadvertently put avitahealth.com. So I changed it to oh. avitahealth.org. I thought, I don't want set, to send someone, you know, off into the, the wilderness there, but, but no, I think that especially your overview page was good because, because we at Mary Tech have a variety of position. So I might be reaching out to you ladies just so that you can reach out then to those departments and say, are they willing to take on an IT intern? You know, someone who's maybe, you know, involved in networking lives up in that area, but we have, you know, <clears throat> we have a hard time finding those local things because sometimes when people do IT, you know, it could be off in Chicago and, and here, there and everywhere. So who can we get locally to help maybe teach those skills along and perhaps, you know, even if they don't hire them on later, you can at least get that and they have that information. And that's also another reference that they can use. So yeah. that's kind of where I, you know, who can we use? What do we have? And, right. you know, I think that a lot of people often forget about all those other things. Like, uh, and I tell people a hospital is a business, so they need HR, they need IT, mm -hmm. they need, you know, facilities, they need all those things. And those are jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something with internships that we like to talk about with students as well is that Avita is not an organization that has, you know, these reoccurring internships. Every summer we have finance, every, you know, we're not somebody, um, we're not an organization that has that yet, maybe sometime in the future. Um, but if somebody is interested in an internship, specifically, maybe let's say for IT, we take that information and we present it to the department to say this person is from Marion Technical, you know, they're, they're a third, you know, I don't know, they're in their third semester of classes, um, you know, whatever that is. And then we present it to say, hey, do you have the capacity? Do you have the ability to host an intern? And um, I think we've been three for four the last four times we've asked. So um, it's just a matter awesome. of asking. All they can do is say no, right? That's right. Um, so that's something that we will help, again, advocate for and to, to be that resource to say, hey, this person is really strong in, you know, this IT software. Maybe it's something that we're rolling out. Maybe be, you know, whatever it may be. Um, we've gotten an intern for supply, IT, um, patient services, medical billing, all of those things. So, um, you know, we're, we're here to at least be the advocate and that resource um, because we just don't have them on a reoccurring basis. But I think we have the need for them. Um, so, you know, here and there. So let us know if we can, if we can help with that. If you have a student that's interested, um, you know, what campus would be the best for them and we'll see what we can do. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that would just be really awesome. I mean, and I, it hadn't occurred to me till I saw kind of the layout and I thought, oh, I wonder if they would be willing to do that. If not, like you said, you ask someone and, and see if, if that's something that is an option. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I'm kind of wondering now as we have students sending their resumes, it would actually go to you guys, but then do you send that off to someone else or what does that look like? Because they're probably gonna upload their resume to you through College Central. Um, what does that look like from the, you know, and some people, they are the hiring manager, but you guys aren't. So, you know, what does that look like from here? 
Yeah. So basically, if they tell us what they're interested in, so I did see that one person mentioned that they were interested in um, an STNA role because they're going to become an RN. So basically what we would do is we would reach out to them to find out a little bit more. You know, what campus are you interested in? Um, what status are you interested in? Casual, part-time, full-time, those types of things. Um, what unit do you have an interest in or specialty? And then basically what we'll do is typically we have them apply online to any of our open positions that match that we'll feed them those links. Um, once they apply once, all of their information is kept in there. So it's an easy apply every time after that. Um, and so we'll have them apply directly to the role. And then that's when kind of what Gabrielle was mentioning, we'll, we'll be the advocate. We'll pull their resume, their application, um, talk with the hiring manager to say, hey, you know, these folks attended our career fair on the state. They're interested in this type of role. Um, here's their information. And then um, they'll take it from there. Okay, well, that sounds good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Some people are coming in early. I think some people are just testing their link to make sure that they can come in. Yeah. Um, you know, because if I'm an employer, I want to make sure I can get in mm -hmm. um, and just kind of hang there. And I know that um, our next one, he, I was trying to get him in earlier so that he could hear some of what you had to say because he works at a local, um, he must be the hiring manager for the lo one of our local um, nursing, you know, skilled nursing facilities. So I, I wanted to get him in so that he could hear what you had to say, but yeah. it seemed like he was having a hard time coming in. So yeah. um, we That's do what it. we can, but yeah. Usually we have about five minutes or 10 minutes left, depending on how many people we have just for questions. Um, so that typically concludes our presentation um, and the information that we share unless there are specific questions. So um, do you have any for us, Christy? Well, I, I do, um, you know, because I, I, I could go on for days just kind of asking those type of things. Um, <laughs> I love that you guys, you know, obviously had, um, some pitfalls along the way looks like in doing some of this information but you have it down now and um yeah. you know and maybe some days it's not perfect and that's okay but <laughs> but i appreciate that at least from my perspective right. um because it, it, it is hard and you know i'm thinking of you know poor jim who's maybe having some connectivity issues and mm -hmm. um they actually had some connectivity issues you know at ohio state and so you know my counterpart at ohio state actually had to go home so that she could take care of some things and oh, these yeah. are just you know what we deal with whereas if we were in person we would have right. other issues right <laughs> going right. To, so that's no big deal oh. um but no i mean i think that your presentation laid things out really well and now that i at least have you know names and faces that mm -hmm. that helps me significantly especially if i know how things work on the avita and i can you know call or email one of you guys and say hey you know talk me through this or what should i say or what would be the the, the way to do this because i know i have right now a lot of students who are interested and you know they're, they're looking at, at some of the big names and you know i want to make sure that they have the, the right information and that you know they're looking in the right places and that only helps you too so that's kind of what i'm going for but yeah please reach out with to us for anything mock interviews anything like that mm -hmm. we are more than happy to be that resource as well for those things so oh absolutely. yeah so if they get hit with a mock interview for me and you they'll be that's so right. well prepared they won't know what to do that's, that's right yeah. that's what we're hoping <laughs> that's that's my plan at least that's always my plan so <laughs> absolutely um, I, I definitely know that i spoke to someone on saturday morning i have been um, hosting job um, info sessions. So basically, whatever students need, I am there for them. And I had a, a very interested, um, al almost nurse. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure she'll be getting in touch with you. So she'll, you, yeah. you have an, an asset right there, I will tell you. She impressed Great. me. So Great. Great. That sounds good. Just let us know. Mm -hmm. I will. All right. Well, okay. thank you, guys. I appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm going to hang and, and wait and see if Jim can connect. And then um, if I have any questions, I will definitely reach out to you guys. Okay. Sounds great, well, thank Christy. you so much, Christy. Thanks. Thank have you. a good day. You too.
thankfully, um, my my compadre Annette here is on, so I'm going to try to do this. Um, let me see. Okay, hopefully I don't hang up on you. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, let me turn up the volume. Annette, can you hear him okay if he starts talking? Try again. Hello. Oh, hello. I could hear you now. There. Okay, so unfortunately, Jim had some uh, connection issues. You know, he, he was trying to connect while I was on with Avita, um, yeah. but that didn't quite work. Um, so we're doing it this way. You know what? We're flexible and this is, you know, that's what you, that's what you have to have as a job skill. So we're just showing them how we do that. Absolutely. Um, so Jim, talk to me about Marion Manor um, and what kind of jobs you have available, what you have going on over there. Sure. Uh, Marion Manor is a uh, family-owned uh, nursing facility. We are a 100-bed facility, but currently our census is hovering right around 30. Um, we are uh, in need of uh, state-tested nursing assistants and um, LPNs or RNs, day shift and night shift. Okay, day shift and night shift. We do 12-hour uh, shifts, 6A to 6B and 6B to 6A. Well, that seems to be pretty standard in the nursing um, yeah. realm. I, I couldn't do it anymore, but. <laughs> oh, you could if you had to. I think That's I think true. we can all do it. <laughs> true. Um, so how long have you been in that role right now, Jim? And what is your role there? I am the director of nursing. Um, I have only been in this role since uh, January. Oh. Uh, but I have, <clears throat> I have about uh, 20 years of nursing experience. Sweet. Um, so Marion Manor, how long has that been around as a facility overall? I think before Marion was created. <laughs> uh, it's been here since about 1967. I was going to say, you, you might be, you know, it, it's been a while. I, don't, <laughs> um, I, I knew it had been quite a while, so um, that's good. So how has COVID affected life at Marion Manor? Um, we are currently COVID free uh, in the facility. We have been since about November of last year. Uh, they did get pre hit pretty hard back in March, April, just like every other nursing home. And um, they dealt with it and they came through. And uh, like I said, we've been COVID free. Uh, all of our residents are vaccinated and about 60% of our staff are vaccinated. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty good numbers to be working with. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, Jim, I love that. Jim, did you uh, say you, you hire? A week. Um, we do a rapid test uh, once a week, and then we do a lab test once a week for all the uh, staff. Go ahead, Annette. Did you say, Jim, you also hire LPNs or not? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Do, do you, you hire, also hire LPNs? Yes. 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 Okay. So, yes. So, so you have need of LPNs, STNA, and RNs all across the board, right? Yep. Okay. So, so Annette works with Ohio Means Jobs. Yes. So she's kind of, you know, asking for them. I'm asking, you know, for all of us, basically. Right. But yeah, just trying to make sure I'm trying to turn up my volume on both sides so that everyone can hear each other. Right, right. Um, so that makes it really fun. But it sounds like things are going quite well there right now. Yeah, we're just having uh, staffing issues, just like every other nursing home, just because yeah. of what COVID, you know, basically turned a lot of people off to the healthcare industry. They either left or got burned out or, um, you know, out of the floor position, more into management, it seems like. Yeah, and that's, I mean, some of that is understandable and some of that, you know, it's frustrating, you know, from your perspective, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Jim do, you, the yeah. <laughs> Jim, do you guys offer any STNA training for your staff? Um, or do you offer any STNA training for your staff? Um, you mean as far as not being state tested and we do what? have um, we do have one guy, one gentleman that works as a um, like a, a personal care attendant, he's not technically an STNA. Okay. His his uh his practice is limited, but yeah, okay. we do offer um, positions such as that. You know, it's not being a state tested nursing assistant. 
Okay. My question, I guess, was related to if you, if your facility had the ability to train somebody as an STNA and could offer that to them. Um, um, the, way, the way it works is we can't really do the training. They have to actually go get training uh, and then get okay. tested okay. by the state. Okay. And you guys offer that training, Annette? Do we offer training? No, I was asking Annette if Ohio Means Jobs offers that. We do not offer it here, but sometimes we can pay for that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's only it, like a, what, a couple yeah. weeks course or something like that. It's mm -hmm. right around 300 to 500 dollars, something like that. Yeah, it's. I think it's up to like 575 now, and that's with the hundred dollar. Yeah. If it's still a hundred dollars on the test, the state test to be tested. So uh, sometimes we can help pay for that. Um, it's a great. It's a great position for someone who's not in health home care or not home care, uh -huh. health care and want to get into it. You know, just to see if they like it. It's a great mm -hmm. way to start. And Jim, we'd be glad to post those positions for you at no cost to you. Uh, I don't think we've done anything for Mary Manor for quite some time, but you're part of levering management, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll reach out to you through email and we'll get connected and get those posted for you. Yeah, I mean, they have great benefits here. They have a pension here. Um, it's, I just I find it hard to believe it. But not every, there's not a, not more people uh, applying here. <laughs> you know, it's a small facility. It's everyone's friendly. Um, so yeah. Well, well, we'll see what we can do. You know, I mean, that's the reason why you're here is you know part of the job fair to to kind of fill some of those positions. And I know we have a lot of people who are um, graduating. You know, some with that nursing assistant certi certification, and then some, you know, with those RNs. So between you know, you and me and Annette and everyone, we should be able to at least help in some way. Yeah, and get the word out. I one email from a nursing student who is currently an STNA and is requesting a position as an STNA while he's in school. So well, that's great. Well, I, from, I, from your, from the job fair. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I've heard, he, he must be reached out to several people because I've heard he and, you know, exactly what you described. So he is, he, he's getting out there and I'm, I'm proud of him. So good for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, because this is kind of an awkward setup, um, I won't keep you that long. Um, but I'm, I'm glad we could at least connect because like I said, I wanted to see if I could help you along in any way. And, um, you know, same with, whether that be jobs or trying to connect in here or whatever. So appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. You you have a good day. You too. Bye Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be we'll be off for a second. So yeah. I'll I'll try to hop on again if I'm able at uh Memorial Health. Yeah, I, I saw that he was, you know, trying to get in, but I thought um, I, I might say, let him in and then say, I, you know, I need to head down the hallway for a minute. Can you just hang on? So yeah. um, now I don't know if he tried to come in and now, oh, well, maybe he waited. Well, he'll be Memorial back. Health. Yeah, he'll be back, I'm sure. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Well, I will uh, mute myself and then head down the hallway real quick and then sure. I'll be right back. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks for popping in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I, I felt bad for him because I saw him trying to connect, but I, you know what? There was nothing I could do. So. Right. Right. Oh okay. well. Okay. Right. See you in a minute. Okay.
what are you doing? I was like, yeah, right behind the elevator, we're all in there, like two people standing right there waiting for us. I was like, oh. And they all looked at me and I'm like, yes, yeah, so time to go. <laughs> I walked out the door. <laughs> So, Christy, I'm reaching out to people, the uh, businesses, um, you know, when they say they're struggling because I don't know that we haven't posted for them. So we're going to do that and see what yeah. happens. Um, and I think that that's OK. I mean, I don't know who you have met with and, you know, we don't know who all has met with whomever. So it's like right. we're just trying mm -hmm. to make some things happen. So Great. got it. When I see people trying to connect and, you know, she looks like she's in a room by herself. <laughs> Connie, can you see or hear us? Hi, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Can. Hi there. Uh oh. Are you a student or are you with Memorial Health? She's in the Grand Canyon, so obviously she's going to have connectivity issues. <laughs> and that happens. That's okay. And I don't know if this is Chandler down here. Um, see if she's having some issues. We see you, Chandler. If it's Chandler, well, Memorial Health. Yeah, if it's Chandler. Okay. Jay, Bobby, can you hear us now? Yeah, I, I can, can hear, hear you. Okay. Okay. This is Connie. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. yeah I can Now, are you are you Chandler? Over? Yes, I'm Chandler. Okay, you look like you're in one big room by yourself. So you know, now you're not as lonely. You're with us. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, Connie, are you a student? No, but thank you. Oh, I love hearing that. <laughs> I, I I don't make assumptions. We you know, community college students can be whomever. So I have to know who I'm talking to. I also work for Memorial Health. I'm just working from home today. Okay, well, see, I'm, I'm glad I didn't make that any assumptions there because I wasn't going to. I appreciate that. Because some of our students, you know, vary. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out who's in the room with me. I know who Annette is, and so we're okay. So Chandler, are you? Are you in a good place now? Yes, I'm in a good place. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that's neither here nor there with me. So we'll just keep going regardless. Um, okay. Thank you for joining in on this. I know that this is a, uh, a different type of setup and it takes some getting used to uh, with our, our employer who was on here at 1.30, he was having problems. So we actually connected by speakerphone and it was not okay. ideal but I, I hope that we got sure. what was going on across um, because Jim has needs at Marion Manor and we want to make sure that he communicated those. So, so if, you know, I don't know, I, I know that Memorial is large. I don't know how large. So I guess if you could just give us an overview of, of that and, you know, what you're looking for, any of you guys, uh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so um, we have about, a thousand employees. So we have um, the hospital employees, we have Memorial Medical Group, which is all of our physician practices. 
and then we have the Gables, which is our long-term care facility. So I was looking at um, all of the programs that Marion Tech has, and I compared it to what we have available right now um, based off of what you guys offer. So we are looking for a contingent cardiovascular sonographer. Um, we're looking for a certified medical assistant for our family medicine practice at MMG. We're looking for a digital marketing technology specialist. We're looking for a lab medical assistant. We are looking for a licensed social worker in our case management. We're looking for either a medical lab technician or a technologist. And then we have several registered nurse positions um, in different departments. So we have the ICU, we have in our long-term care facility, we have physicians in OB, our emergency department, med surge, and home health. Um, we're also looking for radiology technologists. We're looking for a contingent sonographer, and then we are looking for a surgical technologist. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for a lot, yes. Well, I, I thank you for at least, you know, checking out our website and seeing, you know, what uh, programs we do have. So our search check is one of the newer ones. Okay. Um, and, and I don't, I don't know um, if we have any students that are um, ready because it is, it's so new, but I know that that's kind of one of those things that is very important. We were able to be part of their open house. So I got to learn what it was like to be a search tech. And I learned that I don't want to be a search tech, but that's okay. <laughs> that's part of the open house. Um, yeah. You know, I thought it was clean, but apparently not clean enough. So that's okay. You know, it, it's a learning process, but, but thank you for looking out for that as well as, um, you know, on the business side, you had mentioned a, a marketing specialist. I think sometimes our businesses don't always, don't always think of the hospital, you know, and, and there are lots of uh, business opportunities in there that they need to, you know, take on. So thank you. Now, let me ask you this just because um, we have this need is um, IT. Do, is your IT handled within Memorial? They are. Um, we don't have any open positions right now, but we do have a pretty large IT department. That's okay. Just and I'll just add that we've we've um, have uh, hired plenty of Marion Tech uh, graduates through <laughs> through the hospital's IT department. Good. See, so all right. I just you know IT is one of those things that we struggle to find in, in the smaller communities and the rural communities because a lot of those things are farmed out to the larger community. So um, when our students can't quite go to, you know, Columbus or that, that travel's not, you know, where they need to be, knowing that there's something closer, you know, is, is awesome actually. So, um, so talk to me about um, what the hiring process looks like at Memorial. And that might vary per department. I understand that. So um, just to give you a rundown of it, so for the hiring process, um, we have our applicants apply on our website. We do um, use Indeed, but only certain positions. We rotate um, those positions every single week on our Indeed platform. And then we also do um, the, usually the Journal Tribune here in Marysville for the newspaper and then we do the Columbus Dispatch every third Sunday for all of our open positions. Um, but usually we would love for um, applicants to apply on our website and they can just go to memorialohio.com slash careers. And then um, once they apply, HR will review the application and then we'll send it off to the hiring manager. And then after that, um, the manager or HR, it kind of just depends, but they will call the candidate to do a phone screen. Um, and that's just about five questions long. Um, and then if we would like to proceed forward, the manager will set up a in-person interview. And usually when candidates, especially when they call back and they're just checking on their application, I usually tell them to give it a couple weeks. That way they can review all those applications and everything. Um, but after that in-person interview, um, the manager will fill out an HR action form. And once we have that HR action form, we're able to make an offer for the candidate. 
So HR will um, make the offer, and then we'll have them um, come in to HR first and um, for the pre-employment process. So they'll come in to HR. We'll go over paperwork. We'll do a background check. Um, we'll take their photo for their ID, and then afterwards we'll send them over to occupational health to do a physical and a drug screen. And usually it takes about a total of two hours to three hours. It kind of just depends for how long they'll be here for their pre-employment screening. And it, after that, it takes about an average of five to seven days for clearance um, um, for us to get the background check back and then for the drug screen and everything to go through the lab. Um, and then once we get the clearance, the candidate usually hears from me, and I give them a call to let them know that they've cleared. And um, what will happen after that is I'll set up about 15 minutes. Our, our whole entire paperwork process recently changed. So normally they would come in and they would turn in all that paperwork to us, but there's only a couple of documents that they'll actually have to turn in to me. The rest of it, rest of it is done electronically, which has been really nice. Um, that way they're not here the whole entire time. But they'll, um, when I set up the time for them to come to HR to just turn in paperwork, it usually, we call it our pink pages. Um, they have to do, um, they have to go through and read a book and kind of do like a quiz because we have to be um, DMV compliant. So they'll bring that into me and then um, they'll bring in a couple other documents. But after that, um, they, and they've done their paperwork online, they're good to go. And the manager will reach out to them to um, select a start date. And depending on when they come in and turn in that paperwork, I'll either give them their badge then or I'll send the badge over to the hiring manager. So overall, I would say the whole hiring process from start to finish takes about I would say a month. Would you agree, Connie? I'd say at least a month, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a lot that you have to go through, you know, and I know that from the HR side, um, you know, th that that's a lot of investment, you know, it, it's time that you have invested. And so, you know, you are investing that hopefully for the long haul, but, you know, we know that not everyone stays for the long haul. So I know, you know, how time consuming that could be on your side. Um, what... Well, I, I guess, you know, because I've asked everyone, um, because, you know, it, it, it is what it is and we have to address it. How has COVID affected your lives, um, you know, at Memorial? We know Connie's working from home. We see that poor Chandler's sitting in a room by herself. So that's some of what we're seeing. What, what else is going on? Um, COVID has been, I don't know, it's been sporadic. Some of us have been working from home, others um, have not, at least for our department. But um, I would definitely say during the months of November, there was a lot of, it, it was definitely different um, just with staffing and everything. So I'm trying to think from, we didn't see the hospital side of things of how, I don't know, elaborate, Connie, if you want to join in. But, um, <laughs> I would say for at least our department and then for the departments that could work from home, we did. I personally have only worked from home twice this whole entire pandemic because I've had a lot of the stuff that I do, I have to be here in the office. And especially for pre-employment screenings and everything, people still came in and did that because for our background checks, we do fingerprints and there's no way around that. So we've, we've definitely, we've still seen people, um, but just from the hospital's perspective, I mean, it, I guess it was a little rough at times, but we got through it and right now we're doing pretty well. But I would hiring, just... we, we definitely hired a, a ton of people in oh, yeah. November, December. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Connie, what were you saying? I was just going to add to that a little bit by saying just what she said there. We 
um, we started to get desperate for people and, and we really wanted our staff to stay. <laughs> so um, we did some significant things kind of in November pretty much. And uh, through hiring, offering sign-on bonuses, retention bonuses or stay bonuses, um, you name it. We, we were paying people to increase their hours, <laughs> their scheduled hours. And uh, you pretty much name it. We were throwing it on the table and, and trying to use it. Um, we were lucky because Union County um, did have generally low cases. We never, you know, never got as, as you know, as bad as the larger systems um, with how many um, people, patients they had. We definitely had an influx, though, and we needed our staff desperately. We were up on the floor bringing them donuts and, and you know, bottles of water, <laughs> just whatever it would take. Um, hiring has improved. Um, we are still struggling with some positions. And so we are still maintaining sign-on bonuses for certain positions, um, but we're still definitely not seeing the um, applications that we would like that we saw, you know, a year and a half or two years ago. So. Well, and you know, we we've talked um, as a group, you know, for the job fair that, that there have been some challenges to hiring, and there have been um, lack of. Um, interested parties, shall we say. So, you know, and that could be a, a number of things and we don't quite know what that is. Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of, I was wondering about how that, how that looked from your perspective, because I mean, you are a large, um, a large employer and, you know, there's no way to ignore that, especially, you know, in, in the different things that Chandler had mentioned as far as uh, how, how big your reach is. Um, and I know that, you know, they've done a significant um, improvements in Union County just from the times I've been there. I don't work, I used to work some in Union County. I don't visit many anymore since I'm here, but um, I, I learned a little bit more about what was going on. So um, my question, I guess, is on the, even though you didn't see some of the hospital side, what were some of the, um, and I don't know the word, I, you know, maybe kind of like to boost the mood um, what were some of the things that maybe you guys did? And I don't know if that came from the HR department, but sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes it does. <laughs> sometimes. Um, as far as to boost the mood, um, honestly, when we just kind of showed up on whether it was going to the, the floor where we kept our COVID patients or any other area department that was affected, um, sometimes I think they just appreciated us coming and telling them thank you. Um, we, at our long-term care facility, it wasn't as easy because we weren't allowed to really go in there. <laughs> so yeah. um, the, the uh, leaders there were excellent and, you know, did all sorts of things to appreciate their staff and to help their patients. I think the, the feel good there was, was pretty good whenever they could help their patients see their family members through a, a window or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, taking treats and snacks and um, just trying to, <laughs> trying to um, thank them as much as we could, I guess, was kind of, um, and they did, they reacted to that and they appreciated that. Well, yeah, thank you for, you know, remaining employed with us. Thank you for showing up to work today. Those, those all type of things during a pandemic, I think I'm sure, you know, are, are very much appreciated, so. Um, and I know when I was at, I am over orientation. So for all of my new hires, I would, make sure that I would tell them and would thank them for everything that they were doing because I know it was a difficult time and they seem to appreciate that. And even though we were going through a hard time, I mean, they seemed like they had fun during orientation and they really appreciated it. So that's something I did. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and for a while we didn't know what to do. So, I mean, I think doing something rather than nothing is a good thing. Um, now, I have a couple of names in here that I don't quite know, so I don't know if they are students who are on who might have questions, so I want to make sure that, you know, if uh, Josh or um, Harmon J, because I, I don't know what your name is, I'm just kind of going on it. If you have any questions specifically that you would like to ask of these two, that would be wonderful. Um, I was just wondering if there is very much availability for a sort of like a good job to sort of step myself into the sort of health and biology field since I'm currently working on my major in biology right now. I might go ahead and take that one. Is that okay, Chandler? Yep. Yep. Okay. Go for it. 
Um, so I would say I work with a, a few different departments. I am and like an HR business partner for, for multiple departments, a lot of them being clinical. Um, for entry level positions, um, especially maybe towards the biology side of things, we do have what we call lab medical assistants and they do draw blood. They're phlebotomists basically. They do registration so they get into the databases and systems um, and get used to the terminology that way. And um, depending on how you feel about drawing blood, I guess, because. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm totally fine with it. Cause I actually have a really cool anatomy lab right now. We're uh, working with a human cadaver and I thought anything oh. with anything like, you know, it sounds like a uh, lab work and stuff like that. Anything that's sort of like the assistant would probably be a good idea for some sort of like a uh, good way to step my like toes into like the big ocean of work. Yeah. And if you're, if your ultimate goal is to become either medical technologist or, um, medical lab scientists, those types of things, that's, you know, that's exactly the same department. They all work together. So. All right. Thank you. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, we do have a cadaver lab here at Marion Tech. Um, I have not been in it. So, you know, Josh has been further into it than I have, and that's okay. That's where he belongs. And sounds like that's where his interests lie. Um, but we do have that. So our students who are going through those healthcare problem <laughs> programs, I've been talking for too long today. Um, you know, who, who take anatomy and physiology one and two, they get to go into the cadaver lab. So they get to kind of see um, what they would actually see in real life. So we like to give those hands-on experiences. So I'm, I'm glad that he mentioned that just to kind of put that out there. And I don't know if anyone else has any questions, but I, I don't want to, you know, I definitely don't want to take over the time, especially if, you know, students or, or other community members have questions. So I'm guessing I think one thing, one thing <laughs> okay. I'll add for people out there that are, you know, are in school and thinking about entry level positions, um, we also have positions called patient care technician, and those are kind of like nurse aides. So if somebody, you know, you could be in any role, whether you're going into radiology or lab or um, nursing, anything like that, and it's it's hands on experience, you know, working with patients, um, working in our our systems, um, getting used to the um, medical record systems and those types of things that. Um, that are good, but you are touching people. So you have to like that side of it. <laughs> and not everybody likes that, you know, no. I mean, it, and not everyone is as um, comfortable with being, you know, the people person, you know, so I always, you know, we talk about, I mean, in all of our programs, you know, but especially the healthcare, you know, I say there are some that are very hands off and very, you know, not people-y. Um, and then there are some that are very hands on, hands in. Um, like nursing and, you know, very much, you know, you have to deal with a lot of people as well as a lot of, you know, parts and fluids and all that. So if that is not you, that's okay. There's still a place for you in healthcare. So, um, and not everybody likes that. And, you know, I mean, that's why, you know, you get to try to check out what you are into. And um, I know through our admissions team, we do a healthcare navigator. So we allow high school students to come in and um, basically test the waters in a lot of different um health program so that they can see, you know, maybe what they thought they might have liked. And then what, you know, maybe something that maybe sparked their interest. Like a lot of times I know you had mentioned needing MLTs. Um, MLTs are the hot thing right now, um, you know, and they didn't always used to be, but they are right now. But they're something that we always said was behind the curtain. You know, you see nurses, you see doctors, you see physical therapy assistants. You don't always see that medical lab tech. And that's a very important job. Um, that's, that starts out, you know, can be at the associate's level, but, you know, not everyone sees that. So it's like, if you don't see it, you don't know that that's a job, but it's very much in demand right now. It is. They're back in a room and working with machines and analyzing stuff, so they're not talking to people, but we, we need three of them right now, so we would be happy to, <laughs> to talk to. Um, well, and also, gosh, too, by the way, we have a part-time position open for medical assist, the lab medical assistant, in case you're interested in checking that out. So. I might have to check that out. <laughs> there you go. And I, I put that, you know, the website in there. I checked to make sure it was a dot com because obviously you see I messed up the Vitas earlier. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just trying to make sure that we're connecting you with the, you know, the, the right people and, and getting students that hands on um, learning opportunities. And, you know, in, in many ways, even if it's just kind of the foot in the door, like you said, with that patient care tech. Um, you know, but they can still learn about what that intake process looks like, well, you know, what it's like, you know, transporting people around. So um, I, I like that, actually. Well, I, uh, 
you know, I'm, I, I don't want to leave you go without having any questions, but I mean, is there anything that maybe we missed as far as, you know, what Memorial is offering right now or what's going on? Or, you know, a lot of times I know they have a lot of good things going on in the community right now. That's hard, but um, yeah. anything like that? Um, um, right now, well, right now we are planning for um, National Hospital Week, which is um, in a month. So here on site, we'll be doing a couple of fun things. Last year, we weren't really able to do anything because we were in the midst of COVID, but we're going to try to have some food trucks and um, we might have some raffle tickets with some pretty big prizes. And um, we might be doing a hospital gift um, so we just have, we're, we're kind of brainstorming right now of what we're going to do, but I think for sure we're going to be doing the food trucks and we might be doing puzzles. It seems like a lot of the employees really like doing the puzzles and to win a prize um, and we'll send that out through the email. So that's what we're doing, at least in the hospital um, here in the near future. But other than that, I don't think so, unless you can think of something, Connie, that I'm missing. <laughs> I would say that's definitely what's on our agenda right now. And I'll just kind of recap from earlier this year, a couple things just so that you're aware of what Memorial does. But we, you know, at Christmas time, we gave out um, gift cards and things. We did uh, an employee bonus, which we've done an employee bonus the entire 15 years I've been there, even through difficult years, like this year and back in 2008, it was kind of a rough year too. But um, we, you know, our employees, um, do receive a lot of benefits um, and we do have the state retirement system just there's a lot of things that our employees um, I think are thankful for um, here working for Memorial Health and you know in past years we would be having the Easter Bunny we would have just had the Easter Bunny as yeah. a little program but you know well and, and I think that maybe sometimes what people don't recognize is Memorial is a is a county hospital right which is kind of rare it used to it always is. be like that and now it's more of a rarity do you know how many county hospitals there are in the state? Uh, I want to say it's down to less than five now. I, really? it's, they've, yeah, we've really, really fallen off. So um, well, it is very rare. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Union is the only one that I'm aware of around, around us at least. So, I mean, if there's one nearby, I don't know about it, but I mean, I'm, I'm used to dealing with the larger hospital systems, but um, I know Memorial, you know, is kind of just built from within and kept going and you know sounds like you know it, it, it's a place worth working because Connie you say you've been there for 15 years yes yeah. <laughs> Chandler how long have you been there so I've been here a little over a year so I I was only in my position for about two months before COVID even Same. happened so, <laughs> yeah so really I don't I don't really know what happened in the hospital before COVID I only know what happened during COVID so I get that. Um, I've often, you know, it, it's been my joke that I don't know how to do my job outside of a pandemic, really, because I only had that little two months. And then, um, although I've been at Marion Tech for, you know, five and a half years, I, I was new to this and trying to, you know, maybe get my feet wet like you were at the time. And then, you know, COVID hit and I had to change a lot of plans. So, you know, and sometimes that happens. And, you know, maybe, maybe that's how we were supposed to learn. And, and that's the way I'll, I'll take it. But, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like you have um, someone who at least has some knowledge and, and hadn't been there for maybe two months prior, you know, Connie has, has been around. So she, she has those, un, you know, already established routines and knows how things go. And that helps when you have that in your team. Yes. And she, her office is right next to me. So I, I'm always asking her questions. So well, definitely she, she seems like a good person to ask, you know, I mean, yes. you, you have to have a good team and, and that's part of um, work and, and that's part of learning. And, um, you know, that, that's all of, you know, what we're trying to teach our students. So, so yeah, it seems like you guys are doing a good job. And, and like I said, if you, as long as you're, you know, posting those jobs up there and, um, you know, sending those to, you know, to me, you know, I mean, I post those here at Marion Tech, or if you need me to get them to the certain departments, you know, if you're looking for a, a certain, you know, type of position, I should say, then then let me know, because that's why I'm here. Um, Annette, even though she's on mute, that's why she's here through Job and Family Services. Uh, Jane, who was our counterpart at um, Ohio, Ohio State 
um, Marion. She does the same thing. So whatever we can do to help you guys, that's why we're here. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Well, I will let you guys go. I, I appreciate you coming in. I appreciate Josh for coming in and, and asking those questions. And if there's anything I can do, let me know because um, you've seen enough of my emails. So you understand what's going on over here. <laughs> but thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. See you guys later. Have a good day. Bye, Bye, Josh. Thank you. Alex, are you there? I am, yes. Okay, I was gonna say, if you're not, that's okay. I'll, you know, I can shut up for a minute. It's amazing. Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> I just wanted to let you in because, um, you know, sometimes I think people were having a hard time. I, I've already had one um, employer. He could not, he couldn't try, he couldn't get in for the life of him. You know, I felt bad yeah. for him. Um, so we did something through speakerphone, which oh, okay. does not go over well in terms of video, you know, and, right. and that interaction, but I just, I didn't want him to, to be left out. And unfortunately I had someone else who had, you know, connection issues. So she couldn't, mm -hmm. we couldn't see her at all. So it's one of those beautiful things that we get to, you know, learn and grow while we do this, but that's okay. So um, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to wait, if you had something to do, or if you just wanted to kind of jump in, we can do that too. Yeah. Yep. If ready to go, I will turn my camera on and I will. I know that's the worst part of it. I get it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's totally okay. You know? All right. <laughs> All righty. So um, I am with Horde Family Farms. Uh, we are a fifth generation family farm with over 100 years of farming heritage uh, located in, in North Central Ohio. Um, Horde Livestock and Horde Family Farm is a pig, cow, and grain farm. Um, we have a huge team of talented individuals and growing partners, um, and they help us to strive in raising our animals with care, um, utilize modern and advanced technology, um, in order to be efficient and sustainable. Um, in total, as a company, we have a little over 200 employees. Um, some things that we do throughout the farm, um, we raise pigs from birth to market and we feed them a hormone-free um, plant-based diet, primarily of corn and soybeans. Um, and some different things within our pigs is that they are born in a birthing barn um, where each sow mother pig has individual quarters um, to birth her piglets. Um, and that is a barn called a sow unit, which is where one of our potential job positions is at right at the moment. Um, and after those pigs are done at the sow unit, they get moved to the nursery. Um, and then once they complete their time at the nursery, they go to a growing farm. Um, Alex, can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so is that rare for them to be kind of sequestered off? Or, I mean, is that what it is typical, typically done in a farm or do they just kind of have them all together? I, I don't know, I'm not from the farming community, so I'll probably that's, interrupt you with more questions. No problem. Um, so usually that's typically normal for okay. the process of it, usually. Okay, yep. I just think it's adorable, you know, that they have the, the nursery and things like that. Yeah. Like, that's just wonderful. So it is. Okay. <laughs> um, and some stats about our farm on the pig side. Um, we have eight sow units in the area throughout um, between the Cyrus and Marion. Um, and typically one barn holds around 5,000 head of sows, which is the mother, mother piglets. Um, and then the others, some of the smaller units can hold up to 2,500. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, yes it is. Um, and on an average, so typically we wean around 17,000 piglets a week. 
a week. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Yep. Wow. That's that, it's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> I'm thinking that's a really whiny area. I'm guessing. Yes, yes it is. Um, and typically the nursery barn can hold up to 2,400 head. So a nursery can take majority of, can be a bunch of piglets from each cell unit um, and put them all together so they get growing. Um, and then, so roughly we have 150 grower barns throughout Ohio, um, which is the last stage that the pigs go to once they are done at the nursery. And then from there on, they go up to either um, a market up in Coldwater, Michigan, or Hatfield, Pennsylvania. Oh, so they travel. Yes, yes, they do. Wow. So that's just for the pigs. Yes, that is just the pig side. Now, okay, so you mentioned, you know, View Cyrus and Mary, and mm -hmm. I assume, I mean, because I've been down 98, and I drive mm -hmm. by, and I, you know, I see the adorable little sign, mm -hmm. um, but to me, I guess I don't understand how, how wide range you know, where all you guys are located. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's all I see, but where, where else are you? Or so, how many area? Yeah, so right here on 98 is just our main location with our feed mill and elevator. Um, and typically, so we have, like I said, we have eight cell units. Um, the farthest one north we have is on the other side of the Cyrus. Um, and then we have a barn over in Galleon. Okay. Um, so some of our grower barns, they are more of wide range spread. Um, so they range from Putnam County all the way to the Pennsylvania state line. And then as far south as Bell Fountain. And then we have a couple finishers out in Pennsylvania as well. Okay, so we're, we're everywhere. Yes, basically. yes we are. Um, but most of the positions, like the job openings we have will be around here. Um, Mary B. Cyrus. Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay, that's what I assumed. Um, but I thought, I don't, you know, when you're talking this large amount of animals, right. I don't know where you're putting them. Right, okay. right. <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, that's just some of the pig stuff. So along with pigs, we also have cattle. Um, so we typically raise them to feed out. Uh, we primarily grow um, from feeder to market and they are fed just a diet of grasses and hay. Um, and supplemented with the grains and minerals as well. Um, our cattle operation isn't as big as the pigs. Um, so roughly it's a pretty smaller operation. Um, we have roughly 850 head of cattle at our barn um, and they range from coming from Eastern Ohio to West Virginia. And they just go to the market as usual as well too. Um, and then as of right now, we don't have any openings with the cattle, but if like, if we get someone that's interested, we could always work with them as well um, to get them we into have, that area. Um, we have agribusiness, you okay. know, as one of our business programs, okay. so mm -hmm. that might be something that, um, you know, I know that at least our faculty member, she's very much, you know, her family, you mm -hmm. know, I think that if you have a, a farming family, then that's just, you know how to speak the, you know, the chat. I do not. Um, I don't even pretend to. Um, so I could probably say the wrong thing right now and you'll just laugh at me and that's okay. Um, but she would be able to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, maybe ask some other questions that I wouldn't know. Right. Um, right. And that's okay. So yeah. just yeah. knowing those opportunities are there helps. Yes, of course. Um, and then along with the cattle, uh, like as everybody knows, we do grain as well, um, just because we still need to feed the pigs along with the cattle. <laughs> So we do have a feed mill and an elevator. Um, and on the grain side, we um, primarily grow our own corn, soybeans, wheat, hay, and barley. Um, and then along with that, we also partner up with some area farmers and they bring their crops into us as well through the elevator. Um, and then just some stats on the farm side. So we have um, 26 percent of fields are hay, which is a cover crop, which we use to help feed the cattle as well. Um, and then last year in 2020, um, the farm planted roughly 493 acres of wheat, um, a total of 3,634 acres of soybeans. Um, 
And then corn was roughly planted 3,465 acres of corn. Um, so when feeding the pigs and the cattle, we roughly um, use a mixture between the corn and soybeans for that feed. Well, you mentioned barley too. Mm -hmm. Probably not as much of that, or is there? Um, and not near as as the amount of other stuff. Well, that's what I figured, but I thought, you know, it's worth a shot in asking. Yeah, nope, it's, it's considered a cover crop as well. Um, and it's also kind of used as a feeding material for the cattle as well, a supplement. So Alex, tell me how long have you worked at Hordes? So I have been at Hordes a little over two years. Um, I came from a farming family as well. So I have a background in cattle. Um, and I grew up just about 15 minutes north of Osiris. Wow. So, and um, my family has always uh, hauled their corn and grain down here to Hordes. Um, and my dad is actually, they have, he has a finisher barn for our company as well. So I knew, always knew about the Horde family and they have always been a great company to work for. So you lived up in you know, Bloomville or whatever? Up Correct. There. Yes. Yep. Yes. I, I knew um, some people lived up in Lycans, which is a teeny oh, okay. little area that yes, most people don't is. know unless you're from there. So yep. yeah. <laughs> right in between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it, is this what you had planned on getting into as far as human resources or how did you, you know? Um, no, actually, I really wanted to go to school for um, agriculture. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what exactly I wanted to do. So I just went into a broad um, business degree and I landed this job opportunity and it's been exciting ever since. Well, it's good because you have that business knowledge as mm -hmm. well as having that farming background. So, right. I mean, you do have a distinct advantage over other people. So, mm -hmm. and I, it seems to me, um, and I could be making the assumption that once you're in farming or have knowledge of it, you always kind of stay with it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not always, but I mean, you all, no one can take that, you know, that information away from you. I mean, yes. that's education that I never got. So um, that, yeah. that's it to your advantage. Yep. I love it. It's and the company's great. The position is great. So. Now, you said they'd been around for 150 years? Uh, around roughly 100. Yep. Okay, 100 years still, not too yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, to me, that's that's amazing because, you know, I mean, we have a lot of um, long-term farms like that mm -hmm. in, uh, in Marion County, too. And, yes. you know, I, I know I learned through that um, through Leadership Marion. So I'm sure there's something similar up in Bucyrus. Yes, I don't know all the families that are up there, but... Mm -hmm but you probably do. So. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So what are the, what is the position that, you know, or positions that you have at Hordes? Yeah. So uh, the really, so we have roughly a couple of job opportunities right now. Um, the one that we are always hiring for is working in the sow unit, which is considered a pig production specialist. Mm. Um, and roughly that position will just help out um, in that sow unit, taking care of daily care, health, and maintenance of all the sows and piglets um, to assure that they're growing correctly, optimum pro productivity. Um, and that person will also assist where needed when working with the animals, as well as light repair and maintenance throughout the barn. Um, and some, just some regular job tasks with that position. Um, you would help process and vaccinate, castrate pigs um, at the appropriate times once they reach a certain amount of age and weight. Um, and you would help to wean pigs so they can move on down the line to a nursery and that kind of stuff. Um, along with making sure that the animals are being well treated. Um, of course, following company procedures excuse me, procedures at all times as well. I haven't so messed those, anything up all day, so don't worry about it. You know, that's the first <laughs> mistake ever today, so you're fine. <laughs> um, so those are just some regular three tasks. Um, but if anybody's interested, I do have it posted on the website as well. 
um, and I could get them a job description so they can read more into it as well. Um, you know, you always are hiring those just because you have so many. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. We could, we could always use help in the sound units. Um, as of right now, there's roughly three to six spots open. Wow. Um, for that position. Yeah. Do you know about how much that starts off? Um, so roughly, um, with it being an entry level position, it would be at five seventy five a week, um, and we are paid bi weekly here. Um, okay. So roughly before taxes, it would be one thousand one hundred fifty dollars per pay. Not everyone does that. I mean, just you know, just yeah. like that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yep. And of course, we offer um, benefits as well: health insurance, four hundred one k match, um, paid time off, vacation, holiday. Um, any type of educational assistance? Uh, we do. We have a program in place right now. Um, we are working on. I'm not really up to speed with that program, but yes, um, we do have one in place. If anybody would want to go back to school, learn more about animal science or anything like that, we will reimburse so much and help to cover that as well. Well, that's good. So potentially ag business? Yes. I'm yes. trying. <laughs> Well, I know that we have, you know, because we have that, pro you know, that program here. Mm -hmm. And then, I'm, I mean, I, I want to say there's a business program at Ohio State Marion. So just kind of giving mm -hmm. that option to both students. Yeah, that would be, that would be perfect. For and then helping you because then, you know, if you have them, then they have to be going to school and they have to be going to work. So, you know, mm -hmm. everyone wins. That's what Correct. I'm going for here, Alex. <laughs> everyone winning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what are the, the other positions? I mean, that's your biggest one, obviously. Yeah, so as of right now, we do have a couple ones over on the farm side as well. Um, we have an, a farm equipment operator position. Um, so that position you would be working with the farm side, um, helping out with running some farming equipment, uh, as well as um, helping to plant harvest, um, help things out in the shop, fixing equipment and that kind of stuff. Um, and you would work alongside with the grain team um, when harvesting those crops as well. So that it may be someone with a mechanical yeah. engineering, you know, because mm -hmm. we have that too. So that's why I'm just trying to make sure that, yeah. you know, someone who's maybe, you know, had that agricultural background, but also has a mechanical background, that would be, perfect. that would be the that would be the spot for them. Yeah, would be the spot right there. <laughs> I like that. And happens to live in Marion Crawford County, yeah. you know, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, and there, there could be someone out there like that. I just don't know. Um, but yeah, just trying to maybe make those connections for the students. Um, yeah. Do you know, I mean, do you know how much that is? Is that significantly more, I'm guessing? Um, so roughly that position would be hourly. Okay. Um, and typically they like to look at and see what experience that applicant would have versus how much they would get paid. Okay. Um, so probably a rough estimate would be 15 to $17 an hour okay. for that. And yeah, that could be different. We just don't know that's you know, right. somebody else. All right. Yep. All right, well, what else do you have? Yeah, so we have a class A CDL free truck driver open. Um, so that position has been hard for us to fill. So, and, well, I mean, is that a dedicated run then? I assume they, they would just be going to certain places. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So they would just constantly be running to uh, between our south farms, our nurseries, and our grower barns, taking them feed um, every day. And the hours are pretty flexible. Um, some It can be a set schedule just depending on what all needs done mm -hmm. feed-wise. But... And that one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we just asked for a class A CDO, um, a clean driving record, or one with few um, points on it as well. Um, but yeah, that one's been a little difficult. <laughs> well, I mean, because finding someone with a CDL, that's, you mm -hmm. know, that's a different, that's a different training, you know, yeah. I mean, yes, it um, is. We, we briefly had that uh, type of training program mm -hmm. here at Marion Tech, um, but unfortunately that, you know, it, it was difficult to maintain. Um, but yeah, that was something that we definitely want to do because we know there's a need for that. And if we could just give someone that short term, um, you know, certification to mm -hmm. go out there and get that CDL, that they've, they've got a guaranteed job, not only at hordes, but at, at a horde of other places. Right. Um, right. Not that I'm trying to talk them away from you. I'm not. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
that that's one thing that and that's not something that I'm interested mm -hmm. in. You know, may not be something you're interested in. Right. I don't like driving to work, and so um, being on the road in any significant amount of time is not for me. But you know, I have family members that that are. So um, I'm surprised that you are having a hard time with that one just because if someone wanted something that was a little closer to home, mm -hmm. you know, versus some of the over the road, they can be gone for a significant amount of time. To me, that would be um, ideal. Yes, yes. And that's what we thought from the beginning. But <laughs> yes, <what> we <laughs> yeah, um, this time has this time around has been very hard to fill this position. Well, and, you know, maybe it's just someone has to hear about it, you know, here or, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, when maybe they have to post it or, or maybe they know someone, you know, I always say, maybe it's not about our, our students, but maybe it's about someone mm -hmm. that they know. So, yeah. you know, any way we can get the word out for you, that's, that's what I want to do. Perfect. Um, well, I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask this because your business is unlike any other that I've talked to today. How has COVID affected hordes and your farm? Yes. Um, so in a way, it has had a bit of an impact. Um, Production-wise, it hasn't been too bad. Um, but I know on the employee side, we have had to work around some different obstacles mm -hmm. um, of trying to protect our employees as well as um, everybody else coming in from the public. Um, so right now, all of our sow farms, they are on shifts. Um, so that way they're not all coming in all at once. And they're still social distancing throughout the barn and they have to wear masks throughout the day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that way all across the farm. Well, I, you know, I mean, it, I knew I had to, you know, it, it's had an effect on everyone. So it's just kind of how that works, you know, through different. Now, did you have to work from home or were you able to still continue to go in? Yes. So probably about a year ago, which was the end of March, beginning of April, we all shifted to work from home. Um, probably till about mid July. And then we started coming in periodically, um, trying to get back into the swing. Mm -hmm. And not everybody was allowed into the office all at once. And those kind of things. It, 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 now, is everyone back? Yeah, yep, now? everyone is back. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, be, because it can be very lonely, you know? I mean, they, these halls are lonely around here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> you can't tell it if I walk down the hallway, but I mean, when other people, you know, mm -hmm. they're just, there aren't as many students, there's yep. not as many staff or faculty, and, you know, it's, we're still doing the same things that we're doing, or at least trying to make that happen. Um, but it, it's not the same. So I look forward to when we can have um, busier hallways and, and everyone together because I, I like people and I like that connection. Me too. So, um, well, is there anything else that that I can do to kind of help promote you or is there anything that you need to say? I, I don't think so. I think I covered just about everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all that I had. Well, and, and that's okay because, you know, if we had students on here, had questions, I would open that up to them. Um, but, you know, our, our students are in class sometimes, yep. so they're not always here. So, um, you know, we were going to record that and, and have it go later. You know, we didn't say anything too out of line, so we're good mm -hmm. on the recordings. You know, it's, it's been captured wonderfully um, by Jeanette, so I don't have to, you know, we know that everything, unfortunately or fortunately, everything we say is being written down um but but hopefully you know by by doing this by getting this information out we can you know get you some people to help you out and perfect and help you know make life a little easier over there and yeah also give someone you know a, a significant you know bump in pay because those mm -hmm. are are pretty good you know starting rates so um i will let you go then and I hope that you have a great day. Yes. And I hope that the you. job fair works out for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Will do. I appreciate your time. Thank you oh, very no, much. No problem. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye. There you go, Jeanette. You got a little breather.
or is this Chris? I was thinking that Jeanette said she was coming in two to three and then you were coming on at three. So I got that mixed up. <laughs> Well, thank you, regardless. Oh, well, that happens.
Hi, Sarah, you're on mute. <laughs> Are you ready? Sarah, you're on mute. I can't hear you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I know. I know. It's, you know, sometimes it's getting everything adjusted and in the right yeah. place. And well, I didn't have, I don't have a camera on like my desktop computer. So I'm like, oh, I better do it through my phone. So ho yeah. hopefully we're good. Well, I think we're as good as we're going to be. So um, now, now, Sarah, is it just you? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so I, I just, because I, I have to see you and Nathan come at the same time. So I didn't know if he was uh, with you, but he might be a student or a community member who has questions. Um, okay. So, you know, hey, I'm not going to, you know, if you have questions, Nathan, you go ahead and let me know. I, I can stop talking anytime, sometimes. Um, <laughs> But Sarah is actually here with us for, for two businesses. So she is with Showplace as well as r, &R Tire. Um, so I guess my first question is, I didn't know those two were connected or do you do HR for two different businesses? Um, actually, they are connected. Um, so um, Showplace is a family run business um, and Gary is still the um, president of Showplace, but his son Keith um, is vice president of operations um, for Showplace, and he actually is the owner of the two R and R locations. Okay. So they're two separate companies, but um, like accounting and HR, everything is done There's by two. us here at the home office. Okay, so uh, you said two locations now. Uh, Maybe you might want to tell people where all the locations are because I can only think of one for Showplace and one for R and R, but that's just my brain. Okay. Okay. Yes. Actually, Showplace has 15 locations in Ohio, and I'm going to cheat and look over here at my list. Um, <laughs> we have we have one here in Marion. Um, we have one in Kenton, one in Mount Gilead, one in Bucyrus, one in Bell Fountain, one in Delaware, one in Marysville. One in Mansfield, one in Galleon, one in Springfield, one in Tiffin, one in Columbus, Findlay, Ashland, and Upper Sandusky. So it's kind of all over the state of Ohio. But pretty much in the north central area. Yes, pretty much. Yep. Okay. So the farthest north is maybe Ashland and uh, Tiffin, and yeah. then south down to Columbus and Springfield. So, um, and then our R and R locations, we have one here in Marion on Harding Highway East, out by the new Harding. I call it the new Harding because I went to the other Harding. So, um, <laughs> yes. And then um, actually our other R and R location is in Delaware, um, actually just down from the show place. Um, and they're both located on the South Sandusky. So kind of the main drag. Wow, yeah. So, yep. Okay. I didn't know that, but I don't yep. always go uh, south all the way through Sandusky. Right. So. It, yeah. And it's, they're almost, they're towards um, where you would get onto 23. Okay. That yeah. way. So, yep. Okay. I mean, so lots of locations, lots of things going on. Definitely. Now, what are your needs as far as, well, I guess you could say either one and I, hopefully we could figure it out if it's the tires or not. <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, and a, a lot of our jobs, um, so the, the tire company um, is always looking for account managers, um, in other words, like collections. So, and that's also the same for Showplace as well. Of course, in one business, you're dealing with tires, and in the other business, it's furniture and appliances. So, basically, you know, with account manager, you're making those phone calls to our existing customers, you know, maybe they 
oh, I forgot, you know, just kind of reminding them, hey, you know, we missed your payment. What can we do? Kind of working with them that way. Um, and then the same for sales. Basically at r and &R, our sales representatives are selling the tires and, you know, the rims and um, all that, all that jazz, um, as well as our sales in Showplace, you're selling the actual products and writing up the, um, the agreement with the customer and kind of getting to know the customer and knowing what they're looking for. Um, so customer service skills, you know, anything like that. Um, and it, you don't necessarily have to have prior skills, um, sales skills to apply. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, you kind of learn on your feet as you go. So, mm -hmm. so it doesn't, you know, if you don't have sales skills, I would still, you know, want you to apply to it because it's something that, you know, it's pretty, pretty easy to get into. It's not one of those, you know, um, it's kind of a lenient, a lenient position there. So, um, and then the one last job for R and R that we are usually recruiting for is called a wheel technician. Um, so that is actually out, that person is actually out in the shop, you know, doing alignments or putting on the new tires and rims, you know, out there with the the mechanics of of the actual tire so um so that those are the three for r and r so we have account manager or collections sales and then the wheel tech um, we also have the management positions um, for both locations um, if that's something you're interested in but i know they i know they do want a little bit of um, management experience whether it be at a car dealership or you know something to do a little bit with the automotive industry. Hmm. So, okay. Um, any questions about any of those so far? I'm, I'm waiting to see if Nathan has any questions because I don't want to. Okay. But maybe not, and that's okay. okay. Um, so the wheel tech, do they have to have any type of um, like auto, um, like a certificate or if they've worked at a, like a career center or something, I mean. Um, it's always good if they've had some type of experience, but no, we do not recommend, or we do not, you know, make it a necessity to have any type of schooling or anything. So, you know, if, if maybe there's a, there's a candidate out there that has just always worked on cars, you know, maybe with dad, grandpa, you know, who, whoever, grandma, I don't know, um, and has that kind of experience. We like that experience too. So, um. I think it's one of those jobs you either like it or love it or mm. like it or hate it um, <laughs> working on cars. I mean, cause it's going to be a dirty job. It's hands-on you're taking wheels on and off. Um, so, but yeah, no, no necessity for school or anything like that. Okay. So. And then for the management position. Um, well, wait, hold on. Nathan has a question. So. Okay. Can you see that in the chat? Um, I saw it, but it disappeared. Okay, well, here, let me read it. Uh, I'm aware of r, r as a company, but I haven't heard of Showplace. Uh, what does Showplace do as a company? Okay. I, I guess we kind of made that assumption. We did. Let, let's let's start over. Sorry, um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so Showplace is basically a rent-to-own furniture store, uh, much like Rent-A-Center or Aaron's. Um, where you know you have an option where you can um, kind of lease furniture um, and it's it's you can do monthly payments weekly payments um, how, whatever fits your budget um, and then you will own it at the end of your contract so basically say you need a new love seat but you don't have you know that let's say eight hundred dollars to just go throw at it right now this is a way that our customers can um, own that sofa that they really want, um, but it'll be more of you get it, you know, day one and you have it and then you just make payments on it. So basically we, we have furniture, we have appliances, um, the stores that are not the locations other than Marion and Delaware that do not have an R&R &R tire location, they also lease tires. Um, oh. and Yes, and also all the Showplace stores, um, it's, it's not only rent to own, you can also purchase if you would like. So um, they have all that on the sticker. So that's kind of kind of what we do. And the, and the best part is being a rent to own company, you know, say 
your, you know, say your wife picks out a couch and you have it delivered, um, we'll deliver it to you. We'll put it where you need it to go. Make sure you like it. Uh, say she bought a red couch and you didn't really like it. So all, you know, all she has to do is call in and say, hey, can you come pick this up? We really, I guess we need a brown one. And we will actually come pick up the red one and bring you the brown one. Um, and nothing, it doesn't affect anything on your account. So, um, so it's kind of a nice way to kind of try before you buy way. Um, and then, you know, no questions asked, um, it, you know, in anything and everything they will deliver to you or, you know, say um, that was a reclining um, sofa you bought and something happened with the recliner. We'll actually have one of our techs um, that I'll talk about in a minute, product care technicians, um, also the delivery driver would come out and look at it. And if it's something they can fix, they'll fix it. Um, and if not, we will get the part um, or take that back, send it out and get you another one. So does that kind of help explain rent to own? Okay. Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I, I made that, we made an assumption there because I'm, I'm well aware of Showplace, but I, you know, right. didn't mean to cruise along without you, Nathan. <laughs> so you had mentioned, pro, what is it, product care? Yes. So another position we have now, this will just be um, in our Showplace stores, um, is a, we call it a product care specialist. Um, you may also be familiar with like delivery driver. So basically these are, these are our folks that drive the trucks. I don't know if you've, you've seen Showplace trucks around. Um, they drive the trucks, so they're gonna take the product that you um, write your agreement on and they'll deliver it. And like I said, they will put it wherever you need it, you know, up the stairs, around the corner, you know, in the living room, wherever you need it. Wow. Um, and also they will um, say you, um, purchased a TV, they will actually take the time to show you how to use the remote, which is helpful sometimes, you know, especially if you're alone and, you know, you don't have somebody techie to help you. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of what they do out on the road. And then, as I mentioned before, if, if you decide that you want something different, they would be the ones to come back and they'll pick up and, you know, put it back in the truck and take it back and bring you your new piece. Um, when they're at the store and maybe they don't have a delivery, um, they're also in charge of keeping the back room clean. Um, of course, we get a lot of furniture in and out, you know, so sometimes if you have something um, brought back, you may have to clean it, you know, so you'll do some, they have special equipment that they use to clean it, you know, to make sure that there's, there's nothing left on it. Um, and also put together new furniture. Um, so say we order, we order new furniture all the time. So the displays are always changing. So say there's a new dinette that came in, um, the product care specialist would be the one to put it together, to put it out on the floor, um, you know, so you can see what it looks like out of the box, you know, things like that. So, so that's kind of um, the product care specialist kind of does a lot of, of driving, um, heavy lifting, of course, depending on um, what you're having delivered, um, a little maintenance. Um, and then of course, um, putting things together. So um, no one day is usually the same for that, for that position. So yeah, it sounds interesting, actually. I mean, yeah. because there's some, you know, if you like the hands on, it gives you hands on. If you right. like that, you know, I mean, if you like to be around people, but maybe not all the time, you can kind of have a mix there, you know, definitely some days you want to hang in the back and put together things. I'm sure that that's good. So um, yep. That is, yep. that is interesting as far as, you know, giving you right. a variety of things to do. Right. It's, it is, it's, it's, it, it's probably our most, um, the biggest, how do I want to say it? I guess the most physical of our jobs, mm -hmm. um, account managers do sometimes have to go out on the road with, um, the PCS if there's an account pass due, you know, just to make sure that customer understands, Hey, we have to pick this up. You know, so you do also go out times like that where, you know, maybe it's a little tense, but usually it's just your people are excited to see you because you're bringing their new their new couch. So. Oh, yeah. But I mean, there is always the opposite side of the coin sometimes that. Right. You just have to pick things up and it is what it is. And most it of is most people yep. know why you're coming. 
right exactly exactly it's unfortunate but it it happens so right absolutely let me ask you because i've asked everyone else and i I, you know i'm I'm curious as to how it it all works how has covid affected r and r and show place um actually we were deemed essential business Hmm. um so we have been open the whole time okay yep so um because tires um are essential for people to you know are anyone to travel so the emergency people you know anybody and then of course um in show place side we have you know ranges you know we have um, washer dryer sets we have refrigerators so those of course have been essential all along as well so I kind of on that you were almost like Lowe's yeah you know right that's mm-hmm. interesting definitely okay, I, didn't, I didn't think about that yep so and of course we've you know we've been wearing masks if we have to go into the house you know or something like that and of course in the stores we're all wearing masks so um so it was a little scary I'll be honest at first because none of us knew what the heck was going on, but, um, but yep. So we were, both businesses were declared as essential businesses. So we have been open the whole time. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking if people were to have furniture, you still have to go into their home, you still have to take take it there. And um, yeah, that makes it really a difficult, you know, place for those guys to be in, but, but yeah, that's, that, that's good. I've, I've asked everyone to, you know, everyone's had their different take on it. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, con- pardon me, I didn't consider you essential, I guess I didn't think. Right, it, so. right. Well, it, you know, it's kind of like it made you rethink what essential means, you know, mm-hmm. in general. So because at first I'm like, what, how are we essential? And but then, you know, the more I, I thought about it, and the more we talked as a team, it's like, well, I guess so. Because, you know, some people if, if you know, if your refrigerator goes out, how are you going to survive, you know, yeah. and, you know, if, if your tire's flat, what are, how are you going to get anywhere? You're going to even get to the store, you know, anything. Yeah. So, so if I'm someone looking, you know, for a job, but I want to make sure I continue to have a job, no matter what, going with one of these two is not, you know, not a horrible thing because they're going right. to, you know, be definitely for the most part, you know? Yeah. And um, thankful, I'm going to knock on wood. Um, we have had, you know, great success with not having a lot of illness or anything. So, what what we are, what we have in place is working in both businesses. So, um, okay. keeping customers safe and keeping, you know, our employees safe as well. So, well, that's good. Yeah. You know, and if I'm, you know, if I'm an eighth or someone who's looking, you know, to learn more of about that and you know I know that I'm I'm safe in, in grabbing that type of job because there's going to be work. Mm-hmm. Uh, now did you have like an influx of people all of a sudden ordering new couches or ordering new stoves or anything like that? Actually yes um, they had some some record numbers Ooh. last year so which you because you kind of worried about that as well yeah. you know like what's that going to do for sales and things but yeah I mean and with the stimulus of course, that has helped business as well. So that's why a lot of these positions are open is because we're actually adding more staff to our teams because our stores have gotten so large with customers. So it's it's been very, very good for us. I hate to say it's been good for anything, but business-wise, yeah. yeah. Well, I we mean, you know, that, that's what they want, you know, is to get that, that flow in the economy. So I right. assumed that there would probably be that, but I didn't, I didn't want to assume because, you know, see what happens. So, um, right. Right. Yeah. So account managers, sales, wheel techs, mm-hmm. management, mm-hmm. and then those product care specialists. Right. Anything else? <laughs> yep. Um, not, not really. Um, I mean, and then of course we have managers and then, um, district managers above there. Um, but one thing that is super important is um, we do like to promote from within. Um, and we actually have several GMs that started as the, there's not really a ranking, but we'll just say like as a product care delivery specialist, right? And then they've, they've moved up the ranks and they've done account management and they've done sales. And now they're the general manager of a store. So it is super important, you know, to know that they do promote from within and it's kind of a nice, a nice way 
um, to promote because you have somebody who knows all the different steps in our company, you well, know. And that's good, actually, because they yeah. know what it was like when I did this job. So to me, that's a better manager because they can you know, empathize with that and understand, oh, I don't want to do that because I know how bad, you know, that was here. Is there right. another way we can do that? Now, right, is there absolutely. like a management trainee program that you have? Yes, yes. So we have both a manager in training. Um, this is um, affords an individual the opportunity to acquire the knowledge of the rent to own industry and show place operations. Um, so basically, you kind of you go in and you kind of shadow the GM and you learn all the ins and outs and you work along with the district manager to see, you know, your inventory controls, you know, all all the pieces that go together. Um, sometimes you um, are in charge of maybe um, the account managers in that store. So you kind of get some little extras to help you do a better job when you are moved to manager. So, um, and then a manager trainee um, basically is kind of the same thing, um, but, a, but a little bit, a little bit different. Um, so they're still learning from the manager, district manager, um, but it's, it's almost like um, you're an assistant manager. So you do some other, other little duties as well if that makes sense yeah so um do whatever so, the district manager doesn't want to do well pretty much pretty <laughs> much but but uh but it's a good way to you know see how much they do in the reports and the traveling and just everything so yeah, yeah. A different perspective that's for sure absolutely and make sure it's you know something you're interested in before you know you progress to that to that spot so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. So, have you had many people, you know, in those? Um, we have, we have actually, we just promoted a gentleman um, last week. He actually was hired in as a manager in training um, at our store in Bucyrus. And then he moved to um, our Tiffin location also as the manager in training. So it's, it's kind of nice to get, get some training under a couple different general managers because everyone has a different style. And every staff is so different that, you know, you just, it's, it's better to have more knowledge than less, I guess yeah. is the way we figure it. Store volumes are different too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so he started, um, I think it was last July um, in the MIT and he worked a little in Bucyrus. And then, like I said, he just moved to Tiffin and he was just named general manager last week of the Tiffin store. Wow. So that was, you know, not even a year. Um, and he came from no rent to own experience at all. Hmm. So, wow. it, yeah, so it's, it's super exciting when we can, you know, we like to promote from within, but then also we like to bring someone in that maybe has some type of management skills or has some, you know, they want to become a manager and then kind of show them the way Showplace does it. And, and it's great when they, when they finish and they, they find their little spot. So, yeah, yeah, that's yep. good. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that gives, that would give me hope, you know, I mean, yes, looking at right. different things, so. Definitely. Uh, well, I wanted to put it, since we have just a couple minutes left, uh, mm -hmm. if Nathan has any other questions he wants to ask while on here, if not, that's cool, because, you know, it, if, if you don't have Sarah's email, I, I put it out in different places, so um, I put it on, you know, while, while Showplace um, has its own employer profile I made one for Marriott Tech and the test account so then your emails on there too so in case anyone wanted to get a hold of you that's how they could do it so if you didn't want to ask right here I totally understand not getting called out um, but yeah if you want to ask that through email that's that's totally cool too right awesome where is your Columbus location that's good question. um it is it's actually on West Broad Street. See her move around in her chair. Sorry, I'm probably making you guys dizzy, but I want to make sure. Yep, it's 4200 West Broad Street in Columbus. So, kind of right, right in the middle of it all. So, um, and they're actually getting ready to have a remodel done. So it'll be a pretty much brand new store soon. So that's exciting. 
So if you're looking in the Columbus area, that's that's where that is. Now, if you go to the show place website, does it show you where all of the locations are on the website? Yes. Yep, okay. it does. It gives that you way. the addresses and phone numbers and everything. Yep. That way, yep. yeah. And not knowing where Nathan is, if you want to check that out, that would be the best way to do it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I was going to say, I was waiting to see if you had any other questions because I don't want to, you know, leave them hanging, but but I want to make sure those questions get answered because, yep. you know. And actually, in the Showplace um, website down at the bottom, also has the R and R Tire Express link that they can also apply through. So you don't have to look up R and R. You can just go to the Showplace, and it'll take you right to the careers page. And then very at the very bottom, it'll say um, R and R Tire, and you just click apply here, and it takes you to um, the online application for them as well. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean that that's actually that was smart to kind of do a branch off especially if you were already doing tires already. And that wasn't something that I knew that you were doing. So yep. I'm like, oh, that is smart. That makes sense. It is, it is an odd thing when you first think about it, but then when you think about it, you know, cause we all know how expensive tires are. Yes. <laughs> so having a payment plan for something like that is, you know, kind of nice, very nice for certain people. So, um, but yeah, they, um, the stores actually just started carrying tires. Oh, I want to say end of last year. Um, once R and R opened, so so yeah, that's something new too. But it's I mean it's really taken off. So well, I mean obviously it's something that is necessary. So right, right, absolutely. That's all right. So Sarah, where is your office? Um, I'm located here in Marion. Um, the Marion store is actually below us. And then the home office, we call it for the 15 stores, is just above it. So on Bell Fountain Avenue in Marion. Oh, I didn't realize there was above and below. Yep. Yep. Oh. So, yep, there's a storefront below us for the Marion store. And then we're, there's office of about, eh, there's about 10 of us up here. So, and then, like I said, we kind of do all the admin stuff for R&R &R and for Showplace. So, wow. So yeah, you're well hidden because I didn't know that was even. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, when I, when I, when I first, uh, you know, was applying, I'm like, I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah. So, but yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's a nice place to work. And I mean, it really, I mean, they say in the, in their um, description, family oriented, and it really, really is. So um, that's what I like about it. Um, and the schedules for both stores are Monday through Saturday. Hmm. Um, both are closed on Sundays. And it's basically retail hours, so like 9.30-ish, 10 till 6 or 7. Um, and then you'll have Sunday off, and then every employee has one other day off, usually a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So those would be the two days off that week. So, And they both do offer overtime, um, depending on, but um, so there is overtime. Um, and I'm trying to think, and we have... Um, benefits, medical, dental, vision benefits, um, long-term, short-term, um, life insurance, voluntary life insurance. Educational assistance. Uh, we do not have that. Okay. Do I always try for that one. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I would love it, but no, because actually um, to work here, it's just um, you have to be over 18 years of age um, and you have to have a valid Ohio driver's license. Um, and then willing to undergo a background check. Check. So um, we don't even require a high school diploma right now. So, oh. so yeah, yep. So those are the those are the three main main things. Um, but but it is it's it's really a really a nice place to work. Then we have um, we have a phone a doctor program. So like say you know in the midst of all this COVID stuff, say I don't want to go to urgent care. I don't want to go to the ER. You know, you just call that that number there and that's free um, and they'll say, OK, well, where's your pharmacy? They'll send it there. You go pay for your prescription, pick it up and and you're done. So well, that's that's, nice. that's an awesome benefit, too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something different that I haven't heard. So that's cool. Yep. Yep. And that's available even if you don't take the medical plan, which is kind of nice, too. So, oh, yeah, that really is nice, actually. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And it's for you and your immediate family. So if you have a you know, son or daughter and they're not feeling well, same thing. So. Well, that, that's good. Yeah. Well, Sarah, we actually, we actually went over not even trying. We, so. we did. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. Cause I have somebody waiting. So I just wanted to make sure. Um, and Nathan, if you had any questions, you know, with Sarah, you could email her. And if you, you know, don't have her email, I can give it. Oh, he says he's good. So I'm glad you popped on. Yeah, that was nice. So, all right. Well, I will let you guys go, both of you. And then I will, you know, hopefully hear from you that, you know, you've you've hired lots of people and things are going well. Awesome. I hope, I hope so too. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. ourselves. Let's hit video. Let's get my self out of there. <laughs> you told me you'd be ready for crazy, so I'm Carol. Yeah. And I'm Heather. Heather. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Heather. <laughs> I wasn't sure when I saw um, the name pop up as Daniel, I thought she's trying to get out of this. I see what's I happening. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to let her go out that well. <laughs> yep, let me fix that. Hold on. He wouldn't let me do that. that from the very beginning. He's like, no way, you're doing this. Like, so. no, you can do this. That's right. That's right. This is how we learn, by doing. Yeah. Right. Um, rename. There it is. Like, how do I do this? Let's just do, should we just do Pillar Credit Union or Carol and Heather? Or You, you can do whatever you'd like. Okay. You can yeah. leave it as your name. Who really cares? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Not whatever you like. I spoke okay. too soon, Daniel. I mean, within reason. Yeah, people we have learned, you don't yeah. say, just do whatever you like. Yeah, let's... It is marketing, so, you yeah. know. Yeah. We don't have any compliance people here to keep him under control. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> kind well, of. Well, but... I have to keep it clean. You know, this is the public institution that I work for, so, you know, it is what it is. But... <sighs> Yay. I'm, I'm glad you got all hooked up. You know, I had no fears. I knew you'd do it. It only took three of us. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay. Sometimes it takes a village. So. Okay. so how are you guys doing today? It's almost the end of the day. It's been a crazy one. Yes. The stimulus checks are out. The Yes, yes. Calls are ringing off the hook for the stimulus that comes in on Wednesday. So, yes, we've been quite busy. <laughs> Very oh. busy. So, so they're calling to see that they're definitely coming? Right, yes. Oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Well, Good. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you haven't been sitting around bored. That's for sure. Oh, definitely not. That, that's not a thing here. <laughs> we don't do bored. <laughs> no. Well, I, I don't either. So um, I've, I've been lucky enough to sit here and talk to different employers since 10 o'clock. So Yay. every half Pretty hour, I've had day. someone new. So you guys are, you know, I, I told Carol, we're going to finish out the day on Monday and that's okay. Right. Um, but tell me, you know, each, you know, who you are, what you do, how long you've been at Pillar. Okay. I'm Carol Daly. I'm the member services manager. Uh, March 1st, I've been here 12 years. Um, I have a banking background. Um, I've kind of been in the banking side of business for all my life. <laughs> well, that's okay. But I was an adult. <laughs> so... But um, this is Heather. I'm Heather Reed. Um, I actually joined Pillar in October of last year. I'm new to the management team. Um, I will be the branch manager at the new location in Mount Gilead when we open later this year. Um, as well as some compliance pieces um, and things like that. 
Um, I don't have a complete banking background. It's not always a requirement. I have more management and recruiting and, and those kinds of things in my in my wheelhouse. So uh, this has been a new and really fun and exciting adventure. So the Mount Gilead store, is that being built from the ground up or did you take over another bank or how'd that work? It's being built from the ground up. We actually broke ground uh, two Fridays ago and um, there's a website that we have, uh, pillarprogress.com that can track um, as we go through this adventure together. So uh, I think concrete was recently poured. It's, wow. it's starting to happen. So looking for fall-ish of this year that that should be opening doors and ready to service the good folks of Morrow County. Well, uh, that's good. I mean, construction usually runs on time. So I'm sure that, you know, that's just going to go well. I'm not too worried about that. But, um, <laughs> So in the meantime, you guys have to hire some people like to get ready for Mount Gilead or to cover kind of what you had because, you know, I mean, I guess, how long have you been pillar? Since May of last year. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, I knew that happened kind of right when we were in the thick of COVID and I thought, man, that, that's gotta be nerve wracking to, to have this go on and then change a name and, and do everything that way, so. We were okay. It was it was Daniel more so that was having a hard way to go. And heart palpitations yes, so in the marketing department. Yes, um, it's good for him. It was a long time in the making, so it was um, it was definitely something that they had planned for a long time, and and a few things didn't happen the way that they wanted to, but in the end, the result came through. Well, and sometimes that happens, you know. So we just you kind of we we've talked throughout the day. Um, whoever's joined in, you know, sometimes it's, you know, been different people that I've worked with or, or other students, you know, have come in and we've talked about, you have to be flexible in work. Sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes your skills, like you had mentioned, Heather, you know, you didn't plan on being a, necessarily in banking, but um, your management skills transferred into the bank and now, you, you know, can become a branch manager. So, I mean, you don't always have to, you know, just pick a lane and stay there. You can kind of move a little bit and that's okay. So, you know, and some people don't. So either way, it works. Absolutely. It's um, I, embracing the new and doing something different that wasn't planned. Um, I think one of the things I've seen this team here do really well is, is pivot and change and, and make necessary things happen when they have to. I think, co you know, the pandemic happened to everybody and how you reacted to it was really important. And, you know, we're really glad to be here and able to continue to grow and, and bring some new folks into our team. Yeah, because not everybody's grown during this. So, I mean, you guys have been lucky in that way too. So you had mentioned the pandemic. How did COVID affect you guys at Pillar? We um, we kind of went with the flow. We worked really close with the local health department um, in order to do everything that we could to keep all of our services open as much as possible. We did uh, shut our lobby down uh, for a couple of months during that time frame, and um, but we it actually gave us an opportunity to bring on a lot more of the things that we needed to do to assist people outside of coming into the lobby. Mm -hmm. So it helped us um, with online banking and the promotion of that mm -hmm. and getting people familiar with those tools that they have available to them online. Um, we actually had a lot of people add checking accounts because of the debit card so that they could actually utilize for online shopping and those types of things. So um, it really, I mean, we didn't kind of miss a beat. We, we kind of thought we were going to have a little bit of a lull with, you know, not having the lobby open and so that it would kind of be more relaxed. But actually, we actually expanded a lot of things out to where we could service folks um, over the phone better, um, over the computer, those types of things, and handle those. Um, we were opening accounts in the parking lot. We were doing whatever people needed. So we were uh, we were on it. We had lines down the road. We kind of blocked barks at times, but <laughs> uh, we kept going. We were actually, um, we got a lot of business through through the pandemic or whatever. And I think that we were one of the few institutions that were able to service um, other credit unions 
Um, we continue to participate in shared branching, which allows us to service other credit unions members. Um, a lot of the credit unions, they shut that portion down. Um, we did not. We kept that going and we did what we needed to do in order to verify the person that was out in the drive through and we just went with the flow. And we, <laughs> when we opened the doors, it was before I was here, but once the doors opened up, we've been able to keep them open. Um, you know, great team here. We haven't had to go into any other shutdowns or um, anything along those lines. So we've been able to keep the doors open. We still service people through the drive through if they're more comfortable with that. Um, and opened up some of our services that we didn't normally do there, um, just so that, you know, just making the rules fit how we have to so that we can take care of people. Yeah, meeting people where they are. Now, uh, Carol, when you were talking about me, like opening accounts in the parking lot and blocking barks, I'm just, the, all I'm thinking is, oh my gosh, they were like Chick-fil-A because <laughs> Chick-fil-A has that crazy long line and you know how they're coming at you and they have that. That's yes. what I envisioned when I saw you guys out there. So. Yes. And we they were, have that down. We were actually, um, uh, we had prepared for an annual meeting and Daniel actually had a bunch of items that he was going to be giving away at the annual meeting. <laughs> and because we couldn't have the get together, the annual meeting to pass these items out, we were using uh, poles and canes to hand people things through through their windows in their cars so that we could, we were kind of taking it, taking off the weight, you know, like you're in line, but here, you know, so we were kind of entertaining <laughs> from the parking lot to keep people kind of, you know, relaxed. We'll get to you. We won't close before you get up here. So, uh, yeah. yeah. We, the entertainment was a free. Uh, I was going to say, it was very entertaining. <laughs> Well, that's yes. okay. Okay, so what type of positions do you need filled, not only here in Marion, but also to start up on Mount Gilead? For right now, we're looking for member services representatives, uh, fun, energetic people. Um, we can teach you all about all there is to know about the banking. We we're teaching Heather as well, and so. Um, we're just we're looking for some people that have some experience with cash handling, preferably, um, but good customer service skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, obviously, now that the lobbies are open, a lot of face-to-face. -face. So that's a big, you know, those soft skills with the face-to-face -face and mm -hmm. liking people and being able to have a conversation with a person. Um, but we are very upbeat. We're... Um, mm -hmm. Our name, Pillar, stands for Passionate Individuals Listening, Learning, Acting Responsibly. That's who we are. So that's what we're looking for is people to join our team and be part of that with us. So now was Daniel holding a sign that said that or do you just have that up here? Nope, she did. She okay, she right just, off she just left that out. Okay. Yeah, she I mean, did. It's like Saturday Night Live and he's got cue cards. So <laughs> nope, I, I'm impressed with you. He's in the corner. But yeah. he's like, you're doing, he's you're doing sure we, we do everything right. Yeah. Right. But still, you're doing better than you thought. So, I mean, you can just rattle that off, and, and I'm impressed. So, so you we are looking. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. I, we are looking for that um, position for both locations. Um, it's our uh, hope to bring some of the, the Mount Gilead folks here first so that we can train them here with our very experienced team. Uh, so that they're confident and they're comfortable when we open those doors and we're able to, from day one, uh, service our members the way we want to. We oh. have both part-time part and full-time positions mm -hmm. that we're mm -hmm. looking to fill. We're looking for people that are interested in um, learning and then there's some growth involved up too because there's mm -hmm. varying levels of um, member service representatives and we need some people that are going to want to grow and, you know, step up into other positions so well I, I am a member of pillar so I have been in there and I've noticed some people who are that used to be like that front face and now they're right. you know it they're in this glassed up office you know and I'm <laughs> like wow look at them good job um yeah. so so yeah I see that that different level and I mean and that's exciting for them because you know and, right. and so then it's a new person here for me to meet Right. Yes. And we can't retire until we can replace ourselves. So. <laughs> yes, that's true. I kind of have some of that too. So I, I get that. But, but no, I mean, 
that, that's a good thing. You guys are doing yeah. you know, lots of good things. And I know that, um, you know, having been, am, am I allowed to say the former name? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ha having been one of those people from Marion community, you know, to moving to Pillar, I, you know, for me, I will say this and, you know, if Daniel's listening, he might want to hear, um, I don't notice a big change. Like there hasn't been a change in how things have gone, you know, same people, you know, same thing. I like getting my newsletters. I'm one of those people that I will read it, you know, so I, I'm paying attention to it. Um, oh, you're making his day. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, sometimes when we do things, we don't know if anyone's reading them. I'm reading them. I assure you. Um, and, and when we, we do have a chance to do some community things, you know, I, I see that you're in the community and you're asking for that. So um, on that, I, you know, I, that I appreciate. Um, and I know that here at Mary Tech, we're looking, you know, we're talking about more about financial literacy. So, I mean, there are also some things that, you know, maybe in the future we might be seeing elsewhere um, just simply because sometimes we have students that maybe they don't know how to manage those finances now, but then get a job where they're making significantly more and still don't know how to do that. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking at how to maybe incorporate some things there so that we can help students in a different way because, you know, that you guys see it, you know, from a different perspective, but you know that that's definitely something that is, you know, important for, you know, not only for the students who are coming up who are high school, but the ones, you know, even now, you know, our students, so. Life changes happen to everybody and your financial needs change as that happens. I know Carol's done a lot in this area um, as far as teaching classes and, and bringing people along through their financial literacy. Carol, you're teaching classes. Don't be acting like you're not doing stuff. It's been a little while. It's different when you're in front of a camera versus <laughs> regular people. <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, I just wanted us to be more conversational. I didn't want you to be nervous at all. I know you're doing a wonderful job. To help oh. you <laughs> well, and so are you, you know, because I know what it's like and it's very nerve wracking and you didn't see me trying to set everything up in my office and, you know, sweating and all that good stuff. So, you know, I, I'm good now. I've been doing it for a while today, yeah. but, but no, I mean, I just want to make sure that you got out that information um, that yeah. hopefully you have students who are, you know, applying or, you know, asking questions. I mean, obviously right now, um, sometimes this time frame can fall under students are maybe done with classes and then have to take off for work or they're already at work right now. And, you know, just trying to meet those needs of where they are. So knowing that you have like full-time and part-time, that's good, yes. Um, yes. you know, and, and that you're willing to train and, you know, train from within and help grow people. Um, yes. I, I've heard that from several companies today. So that gives me hope, um, yes. you know, for our students, you know, it's like you want a place where, oh, maybe I can, you know, progress and, and move on or or move around, you know, even sometimes if it's a lateral move, but at a different branch, you know, and you guys now have that, that you have that ability. So that's cool. Right. And we're, and we're constantly growing and we've actually expanded into four um, other counties. Thus the name change is why we went away from Marion community because we wanted the other counties that we're servicing now to understand we are not just about Marion community. We're about pillar at this point, which is more than Marion community. So with that, it's going to give us a lot of opportunities. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for growth. And typically, we found in our industry that the member services representative position is a stepping stone. Um, I have um, several employees that's worked here that I hired initially. Um, they're now working in the loan department. Um, so there, there is lots of opportunity for growth. You know, some of the departments right now are consist of one person where if we, you know, as we grow, they're going to need help. Um, we always look from within first. Um, so there are opportunities, you know, to discover other things that you might be interested in, you know, whether it be marketing or compliance or, um, you know, collections, even those types of things. So what? we're always looking, we have, we wear multi hats in our industry. Mm -hmm. So we do multiple things, you know, not only am I involved with kind of the member services out front, but I do some HR responsibilities, those types of things. So, um, you know, I'm very, 
like the person for the debit cards and the programs that are involved with those and, you know, credit card, that type of thing. So there's lots of different things. We're all right here in this little group. Um, we don't have, you know, we don't have everything farmed out everywhere. Everything's done from within um, our location. So. Okay, so you had mentioned, you know, the, the name change is because you're in other communities, but I guess we didn't talk about that. We know that we're in Marion. We know that you're, you know, going to Morrow County, but what other areas are you, did you go to? <laughs> no, I'm not looking at Daniel. <laughs> Crawford, Wyandotte. Richland and Hancock. Oh, so quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't We've realize been servicing that. Morrow for 12 to 15 years, something like that. Um, so they're not brand new to us. We're just now going to them so that we can be of better service. So, so people in Morrow County were already members. They just didn't have the physical space. Correct. Right. Uh oh. Right. Uh, where will the new place be in Mount Gilead? Um, it is right on uh, 95 as you're coming into Mount Gilead beside the Kroger store. Oh, that's a good Just location. Across Dunkin Donuts. They have they have a Dunkin Donuts. Yeah. In Mount Gilead. Yes. I did not know that. It's wow. Pretty new. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. The yes. <laughs> good for them. I'm very excited about it. I I didn't know that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> they do. It's wow. a growing community. It really is. Good for them. It I really didn't. Is. I had no idea. Well, I know I was just talking. I think that one of the Goodwill stores is right there by the Kroger too. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had talked to Goodwill earlier. So that's where I'm making all my connections. But, uh -huh. um, yeah. but yeah, I didn't know that. Well, that no, that's a good place. You know, I mean, to be on 95, that's a good location um, right there by the Kroger because I don't foresee there are, are not a lot of other grocery stores in Mount Gilead, if any. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's helpful to and McDonald's out front. Yeah. yeah, McDonald's, Taco Bell, they're all like right there. We get yeah. good traffic. Yeah, no, you're in a good spot. That's that's exciting. We're good. I can't wait to to go by there now. So I'm excited for you guys. Take it, take a trip out to Mount Gilead. <laughs> I, I will do that. Not not for donuts, <laughs> but you know, maybe coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So well, is there anything else that you guys wanted to make sure that people knew? I feel like the right answer is yes. <laughs> um, is there anything else that Daniel's telling you to say? <laughs> he's he's no. shaking his head no. <laughs> well, we're just looking for some really enthusiastic people to join our team um, and grow with us. Right. Um, that's what's really important to us. And, you mentioned the community involvement that's important with us too so people who like to be involved in their community um and maybe don't know different ways to do it we're always looking for those kind of opportunities and you can get yourself involved in a lot of other things through us as well yeah i i mean i, I do i mean that is the part that i like so now that you know daniel feels like that newsletter's getting out you know it's all good i'm making everyone happy so you are you're making his day <laughs> well that's what i'm here for but, uh, but yeah, so hopefully, you know, we maybe have some students that, you know, a lot of our students are, um, they, I think some of them have gone to online just because of the pandemic and some of them have really liked having those online classes, particularly in like your business, your accounting, your HR. So that, that falls right into your wheelhouse there. So maybe those students would have a better um, gauge on their uh, their schedule so that they could work at the bank, you know, if that makes any right. sense. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to maybe reach some of them, but, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to talk to you, you know, I mean, Carol was not wanting to do this, you know, when oh, I God. talked to her before, but they know that as well. <laughs> but, but you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> That's right. I'll have to go in person. I'll have to go in person and see you now and tell you. So, you so I, Thank you guys. I appreciate this. And um, if, you know, if I need anything, I will definitely reach out. Okay. Please do. Thank you for your time today. And all right. for doing all of this. Oh, no problem. It's, it's been fun. It's something we can do for the community that, you know, we can, since we can't all be together, together in at one gym, this is how we're doing it. Fantastic. Great. Okay. okay. Well, you all guys right. have a nice day. Thank you. You, you too. too. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Christy. Okay, so 
just wanted to finish up with today. We had a lot of people that we talked to today, so I just want to go through that again. Um, again, today we met with Southeast Inc. Healthcare, uh, Goodwill Industries of Marion, Motion Control Robotics, the Office of Ohio Consumers Council. Amy gave us a lot of good information there. We met with Annette at Ohio Means Jobs in Marion County. Um, unfortunately, Marion Area Counseling Center could not connect with us today, but um, if anyone is interested in that, you definitely want to reach out and check out their website at Mac maccite.com and learn what they have, or you can reach out to Jessica. Um, we talked to Avita today. They have a lot of different things, um, not only in the health business, but in, in the healthcare industry, but also in business and, you know, IT, things like that. That's awesome. Um, we talked to Marion Manor. Unfortunately, uh, he had a hard time connecting as well, so we talked to him through phone, but that's cool. Um, Jim has a lot of nursing type uh, positions over there in Marion Manor. Uh, we spoke with Memorial Health. We spoke with Hordes Farm. So for anyone who's interested in ag business, you can definitely get into that. Uh, we talked to Sarah over at r, &R Tires and Showplace Rental. So those businesses are actually linked, um, but they do a lot of the rent to own type of thing. And they need a lot of help doing that from, you know, the people who deliver the furniture, you know, all the way up to maybe some man manager trainees. And then our last group today was Pillar Credit Union uh, with Carol and Heather. And so they were, you know, a great group. Uh, they have a lot of things going on, lots of growth happening. So um, we really appreciated their time. So tomorrow we will be talking to uh, Charter Next Gen and Ohio Guidestone, Acklache in Delaware, and then Rachel Wixie and Associates. I think that's how you say it. Um, that they help place a lot of the substitute teachers. So I hope to, you know, maybe connect with some of you there. If you have any questions, if you have any needs, please feel free to email and either I or Jane, who is the career services person at Ohio State, um, can help you. Thanks a lot.